Gainesville for a renewal of one of the college baseball's great rivalries. Number six, Florida State. Number seven, Florida. The 248th meeting should be a lot of fun tonight at McKeithen Stadium. Should have a lot of fun tonight here at McKeithen Stadium. Dave Neal, Eduardo Perez, Kyle Peterson. Glad you could join us as we get college baseball started right here on the SEC Network. And certainly with the first game of the season, there's already been some baseball been played around the country. And in terms of the national headlines, what stands out to you? Well, I tell you what, there, there's some power out west. And I think that's the one thing to look. When you go across the country right now, the SEC power, which we're used to in the top 25, we've seen it already. Double-digit SEC teams in the top 25. Adley Rutschman and defending national champs. Rutschman off to a fast start, as of Andrew Vaughn at Cal. And we get to see this guy today. And that always makes your day better. Mike Martin, who just won his 2,000th game. I know he's really close to you, but it's always good to see the guy out there who always puts a smile on everybody's face. He is, and I love simple math. And tonight, it's simple math. 2,000 career wins, 40 seasons. You do the math. 50 a year. That's what it comes down to. This is a guy that believes in fundamentals, pitching, defense, and base running. That's where he lives on. And so far, these Seminoles, with that fielding percentage of 990, have really played good baseball to start this season. And Mike Martin has done this a time or two in his life. That is fill out a lineup card, and he will go like this tonight for an offense that uh, is uh, putting up some pretty good numbers. Mike Salvatore, last year's shortstop over at second base, will lead things off. Cooper Swanson, the sophomore at first base, hitting second. Drew Mendoza, if you haven't seen him play, he's worth the price of admission. This guy certainly has a huge upsize. Elijah Cabell, J.C. Flowers out in center field. Nick Baldor, Robbie Martin, Mark, Matthew Nelson behind the plate, and Nander DeSatis at shortstop. It's ninth. KP, run me through tonight's starter, Jordan Butler. Well, it's first start of the year for Jordan Butler, and, and the one thing that Florida doesn't have a lot of this year, it's left-handers in the bullpen, and so they're hesitant to start Butler on a regular basis, but they will tonight in midweek. Not a lot so far, just eight innings. He's given up ten hits. The stuff is very good. It can get into the low 90s. Three-pitch guy, so he projects as a starter, absolutely. Fastball, slider, changeup for Butler, who we won't see tonight, but is also one of the better hitters on this Florida team. Butler broke onto the scene last year as a freshman, certainly showed capabilities as a position player, a pitcher. Also had some big at-bats as well as we get set here with Mike Salvatore. First pitch in there for a strike. Look for pitching to dominate early. Why? Because of the shadows. Tough to tough at-bats. Out of Ewing, New Jersey, the senior. That'll be fouled off. Salvatore was a guy that uh, certainly, as you look at those shadows, Eduardo's talking about, Salvatore was a guy last year that was their everyday shortstop and has that team mentality. Coach asked him to move to second base. He said, no problem, I'll do it. As a senior, too. It's one of the reasons why this middle infield has been so good. Two combined errors between the second base and shortstop position field, 990 as a club. Florida State has really defended this year. Salvatore's got to get it going, though. 0 for 12 last weekend against Virginia Tech. It's interesting because Mike Martin, he is what defense is all about, especially in the infield. That is what he's in charge of most than anything. That one's a little bit low. One and two the count. Salvatore just a 228 hitter. Drafted back in 2015 in the 19th round by the Reds. He's a 228 hitter, but he takes a lot of pitches. And now going into already the sixth, uh, the fifth pitch of the at bat. This is what Salvatore does: works the counts on base percentage 100 points higher than the batting average. Certainly walks for Florida State. Part of their offensive approach. They led the country in walks last year with 390. Matter of fact, over the last five years, they've been ranked in the top six in the country. Out to right field. Will Dalton can't catch it. Broke in. Ball went over his head. Salvatore will wind up at second. He's going to keep going to third. Good start for the Seminoles as Salvatore stands at third base. 
It's been a rough start for the season for Will Dalton. And now on the defensive standpoint right here, first breaks in and then is leaps, doesn't try to get it. But watch this right here. Once he leaps over, ball hits the fence. He takes his eye off the ball before getting the ball with his bare hand. And that allows Salvatore to go all the way to third base with no outs. And he overthrew his cutoff. So the first break, <clears throat> obviously, is not the right break. It gets back there late, then can't get a handle on it, then overthrows the cutoff, man. And talking to Mike Martin before the game, and Eddie, you were talking about how much he pays attention to infield. He was standing right behind the infielders when they were taking ground balls. But he was out throwing grass around because he wanted to see exactly like he does on a golf course. He wanted to see exactly the, the way the wind was blowing. That's the one thing he said. He said, I will tell our right fielder that the ball is really going to travel to right tonight. They'll score that a double and then an error. Allowing Salvatore to get to third base as Cooper Swanson, the first baseman. Infield back, runner at third, no outs. Swanson, tough out lately. Matter of fact, he's shown you some power. Five home runs in his last seven games out of Fort Myers, Florida. It's a quick bat. Yes, it is. It was a loud batting practice. Coach Martin was telling us when we were meeting with him about Cooper is kind of a work in progress. Needs to leave some of these off-speed and away pitches alone. I guess that'll come in time. Yeah, it'll come in time, and the pitch that right now would be his nemesis is change up away. Eighty-seven miles an hour, two and two the count. Again, twelve pitches so far. You're into the second hitter. This is what uh, the Florida State's mo is. They grind at bats. They frustrate the pitcher, looking for mistakes. And remember, he had Salvatore 0-2. Salvatore fouled off a couple of pitches before making it a three-two count and then doubling off. The wall and right wound up at third after an error by Will Dalton and right. And he stands 90 feet away now. Swing and a miss. Swanson goes down. Well, Mike Martin's offense with this team has been pretty solid. They are tops in the ACC in a number of categories right now, including home runs, slugging percentage, on-base percentage, and walks we talked about. And 28 hit by pitches as well. It's a pretty good combo. You got three different guys that have five home runs. 14 games, so you're a quarter of the way through the regular season at this point. You get three different guys on pace. I know it's early, but on pace to hit 20. There's balance and there's length in this lineup, too. And, and this guy, this is one that you're going to circle in this lineup every time he's written into it. Drew Mendoza, the junior third baseman. This is a, an at-bat that you do not have to give in to Drew Mendoza, even if it's left on left. He's done really well against left-handed pitching, stays in, recognizes pitches early. That's what I'm talking about right there. You're looking, Mendoza looking for the fastball, does not give in, throws the slider and makes him chase. Yeah, and here it comes again. You get a 2-0 slider left on left, you're probably going to get a 2-1 slider right after it. That one is slapped to left. It one hops off the wall. That will be enough to get Salvatore home. And Mendoza stands at second base with his 16th run batted in of the year. All right, now. Questionable call right You're there. You're going to throw a 2-0 slider. Left on left when you got first base, second base open, and a guy that has five home runs already. Why do you throw a 2-1 fastball? Not only that. That one I don't understand. Not only that, you're throwing it right down the middle. You can If you're going to miss, you miss off the zone. Not right down the middle and too when, good of a hitter. When I see that swing 2-0 and I got first base open left on left, you're going to have to prove to me that you have to lay off that thing two times in a row. I mean, I'm going to keep coming back at it. He really gave him a chance with that fastball. Mendoza made him pay. That ball is touched to center field. Fabian is there. Mendoza will tag up at second, try to beat the throw, and he does so. So Cabell... Hit it pretty hard, but right at Fabian. Now 
out number two. Now J.C. Flowers, one of the great stories of the early season here for Florida State. The junior center fielder, anybody that follows college baseball and Florida State baseball knows how talented this young man is as he steps in with a 286 average. He has made the move after two years of playing strictly center field as one of the better arms for Mike Martin. The junior out of Orange Park, Florida, good size, 6'3", 190, but he has been impressive when he's got the ball in his hands. Fly ball out to center field. Fabian is there, and he'll make the catch. But a good top of the first inning for Florida State. They get the double from Mendoza that scores Salvatore, and they lead after a half inning, one to nothing. The body of Jessica Meyer, the girlfriend of Seve Johnson, was found five days ago. Florida State leading Florida one to nothing. Top ten matchup, first of three this season between these two teams. Kevin O'Sullivan, 12th season now as the Florida head coach, a national championship to his credit. He is also 26 and 16 against the Seminoles in his career. Here's how he filled out his lineup card. It is a young lineup to say the least. Both these teams very young. Jacob Young, Brady McConnell, Nelson Maldonado hitting it very well. 359, couple of homers for him. Uh, Kalalau will. Hit cleanup, Will Dalton fifth, Austin Langworthy, Judd Fabian, Corey Acton, and then Brady Smith behind the plate. On the mound for Florida State, Connor Grady gets the ball today. The right-hander working as a sophomore out of Tampa, Florida. Don't expect to see him go a long distance on the year, but 2-0 and and 11 and two-thirds innings of work and an ERA of 1.54. Jacob Young, first pitch in there is a strike. Brady making his first start of the year just like Jordan Butler. Eddie, what do you think? Three innings, four innings max tonight? Uh, the, yeah, I, I think it's the max four innings for him. He was supposed to be the starter against USF. That game got rained out in Tampa. Supposed to pitch at home. One and two the count on Jacob Young. Boy, he's been a difference maker since they put him in the top of this lineup. Florida was really struggling offensively. They put Young in the lineup, and it just seemed to affect everybody. And I'm just, it's curious when you hear coaches say that, how does that affect everybody? Well, it's uh, one, uh, you get the top guy, he's, he's a catalyst at the top, but most importantly, he has top notch speed from the right side. Infield always has to play in, even with two strikes because of the soft swing bunt. Mendoza playing a little deep right now. Got to be careful with a lot of sliders. One, two pitch. Hit deep to left. Will the park hold it? I believe it will. Cabell at the track will haul it in. One out. Young didn't miss it by much. But this Florida team, very similar to last year, maybe slow offensively out of the gates. You see what they did the first 10 games, 238. But last eight really have turned it up a notch at 354. I think the power is what's impressive in the last eight games with 16 home runs. The freshman Judd Fabian hit two in their last game against Yale. So you got a freshman leading you with five home runs in Fabian. That's down the line and right, but that is slicing foul away from Robbie Martin. When you start thinking about this Florida lineup, the fact that they, they've been hitting it so well here the last couple of weeks, they're doing it without the two guys that I think everybody thought would swing it well, and Will Dalton and Austin Langworthy, both those guys hitting uh, 214 or less. Yeah, it's been a rough start for both Dalton and Langworthy, but expect them again to pick it up. I remember Ruben Sierra always saying the water always reaches, goes right back to its level. Those two guys are proven. Brady McConnell. Yeah, I think if there's three guys in this offense that come at the end of the year you looked at, it's Maldonado, Dalton, Langworth. Those are the three that, based on what they had done, that you think is going to carry this offense. Maldonado's done his job so far. The other two you expect to come on. Will Dalton had 19 home runs last year. He has one this year. McConnell in foul territory. No room for Valdor. 
McConnell at the plate, a guy that uh, was hurt last year. Kevin O'Sullivan, very excited to have him back. One of those strange injuries. It really took him a while to figure out what it was. Had a wrist problem. But apparently they have fixed all those issues as he's hitting 388 on the year. It's back up the middle. Salvatore. Two down. How about this Florida State defense, guys? It's been solid. You look at it. This is the baby of Mike Martin in the infield. Mendoza, Desedas, Salvatore, and Baldor, they are, this is what comes first, defense, and then I need you to hit. But I need you to catch the ball first, and Desedas, as a freshman, has been stellar. One error so far in the season, it was in the last game, it was a routine ground ball that he missed, but the throws to first have been accurate ever since he stepped into the ground to Tallahassee. Nelson Maldonado, swing and miss on the first pitch from Grady. And here's a guy that, uh, boy, when we asked Kevin O'Sullivan about him today, his just eyes lit up. Big old smile on his face. That one's outside, one and one. Oh, man, at 359, a couple of homers and 16 runs batted in. Leads his team with seven doubles as well. can find a barrel. He just got a little pull happy the first two weeks. And the last two weeks, he's been using the right side of the field a lot better. Maldonado does that. He can go foul pull to foul pull, and that's when he's at his best. That one misses two and two. Let's see if he goes right back to that slider that he got him to swing and miss through. Showed him the fastball down and away. Senior like Maldonado knows how to make adjustments within at bats. DeSantis can't make the throw. And Maldonado will reach on an infield single. Kendrick Kalilau will step in now for the Florida Gators. I like this kid. Seen a lot of videos so far in the first few weeks of this young season. And talk about being quiet at the plate. Kendrick had allowed very quiet at the plate. The head stays in the same stance, in the same height. Good power. At a grand slam. Not bad for a freshman. Your early at bats goes yard with the bases loaded against Winthrop back in last week, March 3rd. He's hit safely in 13 of 18 games, and in seven of those 13 games had multiple hits. You ever watch my cousin Benny? Oh. I did. Yeah. There's a lot of youths out here. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. And you're looking at freshman cleanup hitters. You're looking at Kalalau, and you're also looking from the Florida State side of it. You're looking at Elijah Cabell, two guys that have really stood out first few weeks of this season. If Florida goes freshman leadoff hitter, freshman in the four, freshman in center field, who should be a high school senior. The freshman for Florida through 18 games, hitting 323 with nine homers and 51 RBIs. Oh, no. Oh, no. Somebody missed something there. On a two-strike pitch, tries to bunt it, misses, strikeout, inning is over. one nothing Florida, State after one. There he is, number 11, Mike Martin, as Florida State Seminoles up one to nothing after one inning of play. Well, earlier today, Eduardo Perez had a chance to go down on the field and hand Coach Martin a nice letter from the president of the baseball, National Baseball Hall of Fame. Just so many things coming, Coach Martin. So it's got to be hard to try to coach your team, manage the game with all the emotions. I mean, is this his last trip here? To potentially, State? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I say potentially because this is one place he does not like coming to if it's a super regional. They've played a few up here. 
Valdor will lead things off for Florida State. The junior out of Tampa, Florida. In there for a strike. Uh, strike in. Speaking of Mike Martin and coming here to Florida, you know, he has faced this Gator team 151 times in his career. He's won 76, dropped 74. But the team that he's faced the most, the Miami Hurricanes, 206 times. Has a losing record against the Canes. 99 wins, 104 losses, and three ties along the way. And to tie that all in, his first victory as a college yeah. baseball head coach came against Miami down in Coral Gables, game three. I bet at that point he dropped the first two games. He's probably wondering if he was ever going to win. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> Pop back. And Eduardo, we're lucky to have you here because obviously you played for the man. And take me in a dugout. What's it like during a game with him? Does he talk a lot to the players? Does yes. he leave you alone? Yes, and yes. Uh, he knows. That'll be caught by the shortstop. One down. Uh, he knows, and this is why he's been so successful. At the college, uh, the college ranks, he understands when he has to approach the young men. He understands understands everything about All right. the so young players. The original and you is were being sent down the field before the game, him. handing him the letter Just from you know that, National uh, Baseball Hall of Fame. Uh, Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, along Jeff Idelson wrote the letter in. congratulating him on right career now. win number 2,000. Know what you've done and we know what you and when you start thinking do. about only 10 done. major league managers have right. won as many games and all of them are in the Hall of Fame, yeah. names like Connie Mack, John McGraw, Tony La Russa, Bobby Cox, Joe Torre, Leo DeRocher. I mean, it is incredible accomplishment and you're only playing half the schedule if that say, not even and, and that's the beauty of the success of mike martin um he knows how to win still has not won that big elusive one in omaha as he's coached 40 years first 39 he won at least 40 games every year yeah. every year he's never missed the postseason and eddie by the way that was cool I, I went down there just to just to watch you do it. And I know the history that you have with Eleven and the respect that you have for him, and it, it was it was fun to see that moment. You got the whole team around, and uh, it was that was cool. And, and again, it's the appreciation that not only do all Seminoles have for Mike Martin, but it's the appreciation that he's already had and the respect from other collegiate institutions and. Again, University of Florida, not only giving him a golf bag because he's an all avid golfer, a personalized one, but also a trip on a cruise through the St. Lawrence River, something that him and Mima, which he calls Carol, Miss Carol, um, guess what? You're going on a cruise. Miss Carol is the boss, by the way. That's uh, Mrs. Mike. <laughs> Miss Mike Martin's uh, uh, Mike Martin's wife. She's beautiful. She's unbelievable, and she's a mother to everyone that has stepped into that Florida State uniform. And he affectionately calls her Mima. Matthew Nelson will step in with two down for the Sibidals. The eight-hole hitter, the freshman, another one. Well, you miss Cal Raleigh behind the plate. Certainly, it's, it's hard to replace him. And Matt Nelson trying to be that guy, the freshman from Largo, Florida. Coached by an old teammate of mine in high school, Miguel Cairo. Pops that one out of play. Coach Martin says he's just a natural-born leader, and I guess that's what you want behind the plate. Probably have to live with a few bumps in the road as a freshman behind the plate, but certainly uh, he's excited about the future of this young man. Yeah. 
Two and two the count. That one stays off the plate. It's full. is over. A couple of strikeouts for Jordan Butler in a 1-2-3 inning. We'll move to the bottom of the second inning. Florida State up a run. USA Today coaches poll. Oregon State jumps Vanderbilt for the top spot. And I think surprisingly, well, I shouldn't say surprisingly, especially with you sitting in the booth, KP, but the West Coast certainly has uh, put together some teams now that can compete for the national title. We know Oregon State certainly has the capability, but here comes UCLA and Stanford. Yeah, you get three of the top four. UCLA has already won two out of three on the road against Georgia Tech. Stanford won three out of four this past weekend against Texas, took two out of three at Fullerton. Oregon State has not missed a beat. They, they lost... They lost some dudes off of last year's team. Looked apart so far. Will Dalton looking the part of 2018 on that swing. First pitch, mashes it down the line and left. Does he get in safely? He will by a half step. Leadoff double for Will Dalton, and he certainly needed that. And as we look at 11 through 20, Again, just uh, loaded with SEC teams in there with Georgia quietly at 11. Georgia at 11 and the only two undefeated teams right there. Florida State will see one of them this weekend. NC State at 15-0. The Devils. Devils back at 15-0. We haven't seen Arizona State in that spot for a long time, but the two remaining undefeated teams in the country. How about that? Florida State, the next four games, one here, and then the next three at NC State with a young core of players that have never, this is the first time, these freshmen have taken on the road. Langworthy way out in front. Did you guys used to do that? Because, it, I mean, Florida State, it seems like most years, in mean, the first three or four series, they're at home. That's the one thing that, that Mike Martin has not done. They don't go travel a lot early, and then obviously when you get into the ACC season, you're out. Did you guys do the same thing when you were there? Uh, it was a long much. time ago, so I, yeah. it's, it might be hard for you to remember. But What, what are you saying? I'm just, I'm just asking if you did the same thing. <laughs> I thought it was just a couple years ago. Oh. No. <laughs> no. Yes, that's what they do, and he tries to schedule games with teams up from up north. So the beginning of the season, Florida State started against Maine. Matter of fact, Maine just played also against, if I'm not mistaken, Mississippi State, three games. Yeah, I think it was last weekend. Get away from that cold weather. That one misses two and one to Langworth. You had a chance to spend some time, Eduardo, with uh, Coach Martin um, just recently. He talked a little bit about his schedule. Yes, he, yes he did. Doesn't have to worry about it anymore, does he? No. He still will, though. It's going to be a hard habit to break. And one thing Langworthy's trying to do here, even with two strikes, is try to get that ball. Try to pull the ball and get Dalton to third. No outs. Put him 90 feet closer. Will Dalton stands at second base. His fourth double of the year. And that one's off the plate. Now it's full three and two. Langworthy just 206 on the year. A hero last year in the Super Regionals hit the home run against Auburn in a walk-off fashion that propelled the Gators back to Omaha. That is a called strike three, first out of the inning. Well, Nelson wanted this down and away, and instead Grady missed, but he missed down and in, and Langworthy did not take it, but it, this was right over the plate. See, that hits the inside part, reaches to his right. Usually, sometimes umpires behind the plate will not give it because they miss location. But give a lot of credit to Derek Molikow behind the plate. He got that one right. That's a pretty good pitch. It wasn't exactly where he wanted to throw it, right. but you live at the bottom part of the zone, especially 3-2. Always going to have a chance to get the called strike. 
Well, that was a really good pitch from Connor Grady. It's kind of start it's been for Langworthy, though. Fabian reclassified himself. Should be a high school senior this year, but decided to enroll early. I graduated before Christmas. So comes in just after the first of the year, and I mean he, he should be he should be getting ready for prom right now. Instead, he's a starting center fielder on a top ten team in the country, and he's leading him with five home runs. I think that's the thing that surprised him the most about Fabian so far. He's an elite defender already in center. It's the power that's come along with it. And those five home runs have come in bunches. He had two this past weekend. They're being very careful with him, too. Starting him off with two off-speed pitches to see if he would chase. He is not showing discipline right now at the plate. Again, Fabian with an on-base percentage in this young season of 448. Three and one. Thirty first pitch of the game for Connor Grady. It looks like he was taking all the way. This is a kid that's been swinging a hot bat. Those five home runs. Wonder if that came from the bench or not. I would not throw him a fastball right here. He did just out of the zone. Well, we were talking earlier this inning about the top 25. The bottom five teams. Tennessee 15 and one. They got off to their best start in school history this year before their first loss of the season. And East Carolina is a team to keep an eye on as this season progresses. East Carolina Super Regional team two years ago. Last year scuffled a little bit, just beat Ole Miss in a midweek game. South Carolina offensively and really all around has been a surprise. And AM, John Doxakis, Asa Ace Lacey, one two in that in that rotation will match up with anybody in the country. Now, South Carolina's leading the SEC in home runs. Boy, they got some. Power in those bats. Can the pitching match it is the big question. Corey Acton, the freshman out of Fort Lauderdale. Two fifty hitter this year. No homers. Nine runs batted in. Two Gators on base. Will Dalton started this inning with a double and then a walk to Fabian. See that hole right there between the second baseman and first baseman. You're looking at a 2-0 count right now. I know they're in double play depth, but I'd rather keep that ball in the infield. Salvatore just a little too much up the middle. Let's see him a couple steps more towards his left with this young lefty at the plate. Two and one after the foul ball. I like that, though, seeing a young hitter like that 2 0, let it go. Mm hmm. Acted just one for 12 at the plate over his last four games. He's a high school All-American. Hit 465 in high school. Runner attempts to go. Dalton got caught up. Mendoza dropped a baseball. And then Dalton able to get back. Gators caught a break right there. <laughs> Realizes he got a bad jump, and Mendoza peaked to his left. Did not catch that ball cleanly, and that right there gave Dalton a chance to get back into second. Lifted to left. Cabell will make the catch. Everybody gets back two down.
Brady Smith, the nine hole hitter. The catcher, the sophomore at a Niceville, Florida. Caught a little bit down the stretch last year. Back in high school was considered a top 10 prospect, catching prospect. His show now, and obviously they need him to have a really good season. Yeah, they do, and offensively it just hasn't come yet. I mean, they're trying to hide him in the nine hole right now. Smith, another guy that they think is going to get it going. Taking over for J.J. Schwartz back behind the plate, which is not an easy thing to do based on the career that Schwartz had here. In some respects, though, you know, J.J. gets hurt last year, gives him an opportunity to play, even on the big stage of the College World Series. So you would hope that you would get a little maybe head start here in 2019. Just hadn't really happened. I got to remember, though, I mean, Florida's played 18 games. So that's the equivalent of what, the first three weeks of a big league season? I mean, it's it's still, and, and granted, it's a smaller sample size, so we look at it a little bit differently, but there's still plenty of time to get going. Started the year one for 22, but it's gone six for 15 since then. So maybe the switch is flipped. We'll draw the walk and bases are loaded. Two down in the inning and the lineup flips as well. This is something Mike Martin has seen a lot of so far in this young season. Pitchers getting those two outs and then walking an extra runner. And if I'm him, here he'll, he'll go to that mound. This is his MO right here. A slow walk to the mound to try to break it up. You had the nine hole hitter up. He's been scuffling offensively. Did not throw one strike whatsoever. He needs to try to settle him down. Been behind most of the hitters in this inning. Guys, we talked to Kevin O'Sullivan earlier today, and, and that slow walk that you talked about from Mike Martin is what everybody is used to. Kind of has his own pace as he goes out. Except for one time. <laughs> when Florida and Florida State are playing, rain is coming. It's the fifth inning, which he finished the fifth. The game is unofficial. Two outs in the fifth, and he said, as Sully told the story today, Mike Martin is on a dead sprint. Dead sprint out with two outs in the fifth inning. Take his guy out. He's immediately yelling down to the bullpen. His Friday night starter comes in, throws three pitches. They get out of it. Clouds open up. Game over. Florida State wins. And he said, it's the only time that I've ever seen him run to the mound, and he couldn't have run faster to get that win. <laughs> That's the walk. That's the walk you're used to. You saw that walk. Oh, yes, I did. I know this is a, a long time rivalry, whatever sport that they're playing, but the amount of respect that those two have, two of the best in, in this business, Kevin O'Sullivan and Mike Martin, is, is still pretty cool to see. Connor Grady will now face Jacob Young, who flew out his first time up. Grady has not been able to locate his fastball consistently this inning. And 1 0 count right here. He's been a lot more successful with that slider than the fastball. Eduardo, it's the fifth straight batter. He's fallen behind, too. There's a strike, but the last three he was down 3 0, 2 0, 3 0. No more shadows to deal with if you're the hitters. 25th pitch of this inning on the way. That's a that's a big pitch turnaround going from 3-1 now to 2-2. Two, two. Pitch looks like it's outside. See where it is. Doesn't even catch any of the plate. Good job by Young not showing up the umpire. Called strike three. Young not happy with that sequence, but Connor Grady gets out of the bases loaded jam. 1-0 FSU. Well, the Gators load them up. 
with back-to-back fastballs. One maybe off the plate. That one a better pitch right there. Connor Grady pitches out of it. Knowles lead it one another. Seminoles ranked sixth in the country, leading seventh-ranked Florida one to nothing as we move to the top of the third inning. Florida had a chance with the bases loaded. But Connor Grady able to get the strike out of Jacob Young to end the inning. And now for the Seminoles, Nander DeSatis, the shortstop. That is foul by a few feet. He's going to do a lot of that in his young, uh, as a freshman. I think that will develop. You watch from the right side, he's a switch hitter. Hides his hands once he tries to get ready for that, for the pitch. Okay, talk me through that. Hides his hands. He hides his hands. If you watch when the pitcher is about to release, when he takes his load, when he gets back, his right, his hands hide behind his body. You won't see him at all. From the side angle, you see how it goes back, but you'll see it even better from the center field camera. See? You lose the hands, and then you see him behind his back, behind his neck. And then by that time, now he has to rush the swing. Yep. Watch where his hands are right there. Then all of a sudden, you see him behind his head, and now he has to rush all his takes. Most of his takes will be like that. And when where he the swings, start. he'll go the around the baseball. Yes. It's one of the reasons on fastballs where you see that he's a little bit late, he'll get a little frustrated. He doesn't feel it, but eventually, with maturity and with strength, he'll fix that. So to your point, if I'm going to throw him fastballs, I'm throwing him right there. Throw him right I'm there. I'm going inside. Because going in. if, he's, if he's a little late, he can still get to one that's away from him, drive that ball to right center, because it's still really good power. But... It all has to be dialed up right. And, I mean, we can see Butler's throwing 86, 87. It's not like he's throwing 95. But you're going to try to live there. If you miss, he can do that. Yes. That is out of the stadium into the parking lot. It's special. It's hand-eye coordination that he has. But once he fixes that, this kid is, again, going to be some kind of player for Florida State. Gave fastball after fastball trying to beat him. Now watch where this pitch is. Wants it in. Pitch stays out over the plate. He back flips it because he knows it. And this one probably hit my car. <laughs> you take the insurance? I hope you took the insurance. Now the lineup flips to Mike Salvatore. But Nander, certainly we all know he's so talented. Grew up in Panama but was the highest-ranked position player to attend a D1 school this year. A lot of people were in shock that he didn't. He's got, he has great hands and great footwork at shortstop. Switch hitter. You know the bat's going to come, and he's better from the right side than the left side. And Florida State got the matchup they wanted. Again, watch the hands right here. Anything inside, he can get beat. In the meantime, this pitch stays out over the plate. Bad head comes out, and the power is there. That's lifted out to center field. Fabian to his left will make the catch. That'll be the first out. You know, we talk about walks and stuff with this Florida State team and, and looking at a lot of pitches. An example of that is five of the nine knolls in that first time through the lineup saw at least seven pitches but to that point Dave I mean we talked about their offensive numbers this year they're first in the ACC in home runs so patient yes obviously they're working counts but th one of the biggest differences this year is there's a bunch of flash in this lineup too we've already seen it today give a lot of credit to that man right yeah. there Mike Martin Jr. effectively known as meat this guy can recruit with the best of them all over the state of florida he'll go to georgia and beyond who's doing it today yeah. made two recruiting stops today got here about an hour and a half before game time he'll go out and see more games tomorrow then head back to tallahassee after that well actually probably go straight over to nc state yeah 
Just another week of an assistant coach. We talked to Mike Martin about that, and one of the things that I think overlooked in all of his success is the fact that he's had a chance for 20-plus years to work with his son. What a treat that has to be for Coach Martin. But the first thing he said, it wasn't necessarily about the relationship. It was about how hard meat works is what was impressive. You get to coach him, too. So you get to coach your son, and then, and then you get to coach with him for two decades. Swanson hammers it, but right at center field. That'll be out number two. And here comes one of the best-looking prospects in all of college baseball, Drew Mendoza, 6'5", 230. He looks the part. You know, you're all saying, you know, can you walk the walk, talk the talk. I think he's got, he's got the skill set that had a lot of scouts drooling right now. Tell you what, he looks the part when he gets off the bus. That's for sure. I mean, that, that looks like a big league third base. And the one thing that has started to come this year, seven home runs last year from Mendoza, has five already this year. So the power's starting to come. The other thing is the defensive side. He struggled a little bit defensively last year, has not made an error this year over third base. That's a great sign when you see a left-handed hitter against a left-handed pitcher roll like that, not open up and expose his chest to the pitcher. He's seen the ball well, and he understands how quiet his feet have to be to make that happen. That's when I go fastball in. So if you see that, if a guy stand on it that good, then you're worried about what he's going to do with a fastball away, which we saw what he did with a fastball away last time. So 2-0 slider, you think 2-1, you're probably going to get the same thing. Instead, it's a fastball, middle away, stays on it, drives it out to left center. That drove in the first floor to stay run. Three and one now. That's a good take. Draws the walk. The preseason All-American. Hit 313 last year with seven home runs. Already has five this year. And Elijah Cabell will step in the left fielder. So Elijah might be a little bit light on meal money when they go home today because Mike Martin, Eddie, as you tell me, parks a good 60, 70 feet beyond the left field fence. <laughs> Elijah hit his hood yesterday in BP. Oh, he said no. it went about 460 <laughs> feet. That, that, that may mean that uh, the meal money's a little light on the way home tonight. Parks his car around left center field, too. Really impressive power from this young freshman. Yeah, Eddie, there are guys to when you go lean on a batting cage, it sounds different when it comes off their bat. It sounds different when it comes off this freshman's bat. And to hear Mike Martin talk about him and just the raw power that he has, a lot of times that's the last thing you see for a freshman is that power to come. The power came from the minute he stepped on campus. And when I went to Tallahassee a couple weeks ago to interview Mike Martin, I was on the field and Elijah Cabell comes up to me and starts picking my brain pretty much like, Okay, what did you do? What did you do to be successful against certain pitchers, especially left-handed pitching? And, um, again, he didn't forget. He came up to me today. And he goes, I've only faced one lefty so far, and I'm still trying to pick up stuff. But we're showing you this right now because right under the flag today during batting practice, and I know it's batting practice, but this is a big center field. It says 400. It plays a lot bigger than what it says there. He hit it over everything. It's raw power. As a freshman, <laughs> What's going to happen in two more years after this? Yeah, it's it's scary. Dave, we've done a lot of games here. But where that batter's eye is, I've maybe seen five balls go out to dead center. Maybe. You hit it over the top of the batter's eye. I remember Lyle Mouton did that in a game in Omaha when it was 420 to dead center, and there was a batter's eye on top of it. He hit it right over the top of the batter's eye. I didn't think I'd ever seen a ball hit that far in my entire life. Have you seen 91. one? Huh? That was 90. Yeah, you had, had your glasses on, too. I did. That was a long time ago. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. Yeah, and, and you were 30. <laughs> uh, so Cabell will face a new pitcher.
Christian Scott, the freshman right-hander, one and one on the year with a 2.08 ERA. 6'5", 195, a lot to like about this young man. Well, you're going to see a lot of freshmen come out of this Florida bullpen. Uh, they start four in the lineup, and once you get past the starting rotation on the weekend, it, it gets a lot younger. Scott is one of those, 90 to 94, a slider and a changeup back behind it. Talking to Kevin O'Sullivan today, he said, you know what? This could be one of the next ones. And this is what he's had the ability to do with those that he thinks may be one of the next ones, the singers, the Kowars, the Fiatos. He's not start them on the weekend right when they get there. You can ease them into it, start them in some midweek games, bring them out of the bullpen, and as the season goes on, that role continues to rise. That's real. 93 miles an hour. Good enough for the strikeout of Cabell. But the home run off the bat of Nander DeSatis gives it a 2-0 Florida State lead. On of future big leaguers in the Southeastern Conference in 2019. As good as this league has ever been, and certainly it has been a good league for a long time. I loved watching Jake Mangum, Antoine Duplantis. Mangum from Mississippi State, Duplantis from LSU, chasing the all-time hits leader, Eddie Furness, this year. Those two going neck and neck. Can they cross the finish line? Will one of those two be the SEC career hits leader. Grady McConnell leads things off for Florida. One and one to count. Grady still on the mound for Florida State. Sharply hit out to second, but had him played perfectly. Salvatore makes the play. All right, so opening weekend in the SEC. Vandy AM, Vandy the number two team in the country offensively. That is a loaded lineup, and they've showed why. That's a great matchup. So you get Vandy offense against the AM pitching staff, which is a sub two ERA on the season so far. State comes here to Florida. Dave and I will be here. Alabama will miss. Thomas Dillard, seven home runs. That's time for the SEC lead. Tyler Keenan, 26 stakes. Here we go. The Sadis, long throw. Got him. Maldonado is retired. How you like that, boys? <laughs> Again, this is a come-out show for this young man right here. See the confidence that the Sedas has at shortstop. This time makes the play on Maldonado, uses the grass, keeps the ball down. You see a lot of young shortstops sometimes come up and overthrow it. Yes. This time he makes sure that he gives his first baseman an opportunity. Well-placed with a big hop at first. Callie Lau will step in. Kendrick struck out his first time. It's exciting to see kids like that in college baseball. They, because you don't, you don't see a lot of freshman shortstops that look like that. That have real power, can make the play that he just did. And then have the presence of mind when he got up, Eddie, like you talked about, not to hurry it up and airmail the thing, but to know that there's nothing wrong with skipping it over there. It gives your first baseman a lot more of a chance to make a play. You can see why everybody was so high on DeSatis coming out of high school. That could be a gapper off the bat of Cali Lau. He'll turn the corner at first, but he'll hold up there as Robbie Martin got to it in a hurry. Again, we talk about the freshmen on this team and on both teams. Kalalau right there going right center. You don't see freshmen driving the ball like that the other way. So quiet at the plate. Does it the maturity, the calm presence that he has. Talking to his Florida coaching staff, that was the one thing they said is that they almost have to encourage him to pull it more in BP because he wants to use the right side of the field so much. I like it, though. Absolutely. It's a strong approach. It's not like he's feeling for it. Will Dalton doubled his first time up. But, you know, DeSantis also, I mean, he's 6'2", almost 200 yeah. pounds over there at shortstop. I mean, he's a big frame, but you know it's going to get some more size on him. It's 40 more pounds than I was when I was a freshman. Tell me you came in at 160. 160. Oh, I'm like 60 more than him. <laughs> <laughs> High fly ball to the right side. <laughs> but you're working that down, though. No bread. 
Uh, oh, Brett. Hey, when we come back, we'll visit with number 11. We'll ask him about his shortstop. Stay with us. Florida State leading Florida 2 to nothing. Down in that Florida State dugout is longtime head coach Mike Martin, who joins us now with a headset on. And, Coach, uh, first off, congratulations, 2,000 victories. I know you've had a lot of accomplishments in your career, but talk to me about, you know, now that you've had a chance to reflect, what that means to you. Well, I, I had a love affair with Florida State for over 50 years. And just to have the opportunity to coach baseball at Florida State is so meaningful to me and my family. Of course, my son played at Florida State girls went to Florida State so I'm just very thankful that that I got an opportunity to coach them. what happened is something that I never dreamed would happen but I would like to say that the Florida Gators really were over nice to me before the game and presented me with some gifts and, and I was touched I love it Nander to say it as a shortstop not only defensively but also the bulk that he hit um, how special can this kid be Eduardo, he is a young man that I think will do nothing but get better. And he he loves to, to practice. He loves to play. Every day he comes to practice with that beautiful smile on his face, and he's never satisfied. As long as you've been in the game, you know that's what it takes. Levin, you got another freshman that's pretty good, and he may owe you a little bit of money right now, too. I heard that Elijah Cabell may have, uh, may have forced you to go to the body <laughs> shop. <here. laughs> Word passes fast. You should have heard that thing, guys. It was like a cannonball hitting 15 sheets stacked together of 10. <laughs> it was unbelievable. I could hear it. I knew it was a car, and I'm going, oh, please, don't be mine. And then three guys came running in the left field gate laughing, so I knew it hit my car. <laughs> um, Coach, uh this team, very young baseball team this year, one of the younger ones you've put out on the field over your career. Uh, talk to me about what you expect from this group as this season unfolds. Hard work, dedication, believe in themselves. This club has done a very good job. Work habits, they've gone out early. They've stayed late. They know that with the schedule that we've got, the ambitions that we have, it's going to take a lot of luck. It's going to take a lot of hard work to accomplish our goal. I love the young man that's at first base right now, J.C. Flowers, three out of four in stolen base attempts, but also he is your closer. How special has it uh, seen for you and your point of view from being a freshman all the way to a junior right now, his development? I'll tell you what, Eduardo. He, <laughs> to throw that 86-mile-an-hour slider is something that uh, I wish I could say, yeah, I taught him how to throw that one, but. He is a guy that is just a tremendous athlete. He was a wide receiver in football. He's a guy that just enjoys competition, and I think that's what's given him the desire to become the pitcher that he is becoming, and that's the challenge of each time a hitter gets in there, he knows he's competing with that hitter. Have you ever had a guy come out of fall ball like that? So where you go into fall, he hasn't pitched. He's already been there for a few years. And you get done with fall ball, and you look at it and say, that's our closer? <laughs> no. I have to admit, I have it, KP. That's one of those surprises. I take that I one. figured he'd just, you know, not go through the motions, but just see what he had. And then all of a sudden, we're getting 95, 96 on the fastball and, and 86 on the slider. And then the other day, he threw one at 88. So, He's a young man that uh, you you have a very good chance of seeing tonight. Levin, i got to tell you, um, I know we'll see you again against Clemson on ESPN2 here in a few weeks and, I, and, and hopefully well into the postseason. But i I got to tell you, and, and I, I'm not going to speak for everybody, but um, it has been an absolute pleasure to cover you and be around you and, and just see the way that you look at, at the game and the world. So I, I know that players know how you've touched them. Uh, but there's a lot of us that do this, and, and those that you just come around on a daily basis, that it's made a huge impact too. So I, I, I thank you because it's been a blast. To, it's been a blast to be around you. Well, can't thank you enough for your kind words, KP. It's, it's a delight to coach baseball, watch young men grow up. They come to us as boys and leave as men, and I'm very proud of each and every athlete all over the country that 
goes through a tough schedule in college athletics and turns out to be heck senators and presidents of corporations and it's it's very interesting what athletics can do for a young man well coach i'll say this that you've cost me a lot of money i think you, you taught me how to play the game of wolf on the golf course 35 <laughs> years ago and i think you left something out as you were telling me because i can't ever win so thank you very much well it was it was no problem <laughs> yeah, yeah. i'm it sure was. it wasn't it was easy. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably been waiting for you to come back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you got the short end of the yeah, stick. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, At least I came in and I would develop into a first rounder because of that man right there. <laughs> uh, coach, uh, great talking with you as always. Appreciate your time and uh, good luck rest of the way. I know it's a young, energizing uh, team, so uh, have fun this year. Thank you very much. And to everybody, I want you to know how much I appreciate the great job that you do year after year promoting this great game of college baseball. I'm telling you guys, the commodity is getting more interesting every year. Well, we appreciate it. We'll let you get back to your business, and uh, we'll see you down the road, Eleven. Thank you very much. Florida State with an opportunity here to... Tack one more on after the balk. He had done it a couple times before also. They gave him a break, but. To the left side. Connell says he has it, and he does. That'll be out number two. Let's go back to that balk. Talk me through this one. Well, one thing you do right here, just look at him right now. He does not come to a complete stop. Goes straight down, just a pause, almost a, a slight pause. That's the one thing. It's not a change in direction. It has to be a stop. And if there's a guy on first base and they call a balk with a right-hander on the mound, nine out of ten times, it's because of that. That's what speed does also. Yep. Well, J.C. Flowers at second base, if he is looking, the man on the mound, so far, he has done the same thing twice. Checks the runner at second, then turns his head towards home, and a little bit over a second later, he's throwing the ball home, not double-checking. Right there, after he turns, changed his look that time. J.C. was not able to even get a good secondary. Matthew Nelson. The freshman catcher struck out his first time. That was against Jordan Butler. Now he's working against Christian Scott. Big swing and a miss. That fastball has like a second gear to it. Talk about velocity. You see that on the bottom right of the screen. But what you also have to see is the effective velocity. That's that new stat that a lot of hitters, you might look like, might be 93, but it really plays like 96. Good spin on it. Off the fist. Boy, all oh, wow. hot. McConnell bare hands makes the play. Great, great reaction. Gets caught in between right here. The ball has spin on it. Some English bare hands it. Doesn't panic. Beautiful throw by McConnell. Florida State leading Florida 2 to nothing as we move to the bottom of the fourth inning. And down in that Gator dugout is the head coach, Kevin O'Sullivan. Sully, thanks for putting the headset on for us for a moment. Uh, first thing, you know, Mike Martin, 2,000 wins. You honored him before the game today. Um, you guys have had some pretty good baseball games. What are your thoughts as he puts his cleats up for good? Well, was, I think the record's probably never going to be broken, to be honest with you. You know, the way college sports are now and you know, the way sports in general – you know, it's hard for somebody to stay to school as, as long as he has and had the you know, type of you know, success he's had. I mean, he's, every year he's got 40-plus wins, and um, I just think that's going to be extremely hard and almost impossible to duplicate. Coach, was there a sand wedge in that bag? <laughs> we had some maple syrup. <laughs> we sent him up to Canada, the St. Lawrence River. We got all kinds of stuff in there. We had some maple leaf. We had all kinds of stuff. Hockey puck, the whole thing. <laughs> 
<laughs> now, you, you look at no, no, serious. No, you look at the <laughs> at your defense so far, and it scuffled throughout the beginning of this season. It played a little bit better this past weekend, but so far in this game, two errors. Yeah, you know, I think the ball, the, the will kind of caught him off guard. The women's blowing straight out to right, and he just took a false step, and then obviously, you know, ball got over his head, and then, you know, Brady, you know, he just made that mistake, but then he does exactly what, you know, we talked about earlier. He makes a great player, you know, play there to end the inning. So he's working through it. It's been a while since he's played. Obviously, he missed all of last year, so um, keep working at it, and obviously he's very talented. So you start for four freshmen again tonight, and obviously league play starts this weekend. So going into this weekend, what do you think of your club? What do you think you are right now? I really don't know at this point. I'll be honest with you. I know I know we're good. We have Mason Leftwich on the mound and Tyler Dyson, and our bullpen's starting to come together. We've been swinging the bats good, but you know we're, it, it's a totally different level of you know uh, of competition we're going to face moving forward. So I, to answer your question, I wish I had a better answer. I'll probably have a better answer in about four or five weeks, but. Um, we're young, we're talented, but we've got a lot of things to work on for sure. All right, so I will let you get back to business. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys. Thank you. After Langworthy flies out to left, one down, and Fabian steps in against Jonah Scalaro, the pitcher. What do you make of his comments about still trying to get a read on his team? It's honest, I mean, it's, and I think it's accurate. I mean, when you look at what's happened at this point, if you go back a week and a half, I mean, it was an offense that was really scuffling. Obviously, it's changed a little bit since then. But the reality is the guys that maybe you thought would scuffle haven't, and some that you didn't think would have. And I think that's the biggest unknown at this point. Your concern about freshmen is can you carry it 56 games, or ideally if you're going to play for a while, can you carry it 66 or 70? And That's right. the part that you don't know at this point. But early returns on the freshmen have been very good. And you expect the older guys to come around. I mean, this team has to have Will Dalton and Langworthy step yes. up. I mean, they, yeah. they can't yes. afford not to have that happen. I think once that happens, I think everything else would get in order. Hit on the button out to center field. J.C. Flowers out there to make the catch. Two down. Scalera, the sophomore left-hander. In, in relief of Connor Grady. Last year had six saves, 3.4 ERA, freshman All-American. This season he's thrown 12 innings. No runs in his last four appearances over 11 innings. Really good changeup. He'll throw at any count against right-handed hitters. Against left-handed hitters, he'll throw more of that right there, that slider. That's a good one, too. He'll throw for a strike early in counts, and then he'll try to get you to chase. You'll see a lot of fly balls against them. Corey Acton. The Gator third baseman flew out his first time up. Average down to 246. Seminole struck for a run in the first inning and another one in the third. Off the long home run from Nander DeSatis into the parking lot. Might be in Eduardo's front seat when we get out there. Great. <laughs> I, gotta feel I mean, seriously, it work. might be in his front seat. <laughs> get to the airport around 4 o'clock, drop the keys in the drop box. And run. See <laughs> <laughs> Signed Nander DeSatis, right? What are you talking about? That wasn't a hole in my windshield. <laughs> I'll be Eddie Murphy. It wasn't me. <laughs> uh, just yeah. uh, just past that light pole. It's an official's parking. I figured I was an official. <laughs> <laughs> well, if there's not a ball through your windshield, maybe they'll tow it. It, it could be one or the other today. <laughs> so Acton draws the walk. That is a freshman shortstop that has all the tools. As you mentioned, 6'2", almost 200 pounds, and this is what he can do with a bat. It's pretty, fellas. See that? You missed location. You let his hands extend on pitches middle away. You give enough time for that barrel to get there. Great hand-eye coordination. I do have some good news. I saw the ball bounce. So. Good thing. 
Maybe it went off the top of the uh, the hood. Just a big <laughs> dent there instead of the windshield. Here's Brady Smith. Appreciate that, Dave. I'm here to help. Positive thinking. One thing Florida State will do is throw a lot of off-speed pitches, especially against guys that are struggling. See if they can get them to chase. So far, Brady Smith, which walked the first time, has yet to see a strike this young evening. Now it's one and one on Smith. Just a 189 hitter. was considered one of the top 10 catchers in the country coming out of high school. Throw back to first. Again, defensively, this is a Florida State team, even as young as they are. Five errors through 14 games, a 990 fielding percentage. That is tops in the country. Think about this, their infield coach next year will not be there any longer. It's Mike Martin. Well, the next guy certainly hopes he's trained him well, right? It's all about being able to read the bounce and the feet. That's fouled out of play. Look at that left side of that infield. I mean, that's like uh, big league size over there. 6-2, yeah. shortstop 6-5 for your third baseman. When, Men when Mendoza came in, I mean, it, it was along the lines of what we talk about with DeSantis. Like, you didn't expect to see him in college. And then he got there, and the power started to come a little bit further. Again, the thing that impresses me the most this year about Mendoza is the defense. There has been a big defensive improvement this year. You know, there's a, obviously a lot of discussion about who the next guy will be. And Mike Martin said that he's just kind of stepping away, but I know that he'll probably plant some seeds along the way before he leaves. His son, Mike Martin yeah, Jr., certainly one of the guys that will be in that conversation. But um, really, there hasn't been much of an indication of who will be the next head coach as that one is shot out to right field. Nice catch out there by Robbie Martin. Whoever the next coach is is getting a heck of a team. And a schedule. <laughs> Do nothing, Seminoles. Advice are you going to give the next head coach that takes over this daunting task in following you here? Some of the best advice that I ever got was be yourself, accept yourself know yourself I have no input into the next coach but I want people to know that I want a Seminole to be the next baseball coach at Florida State there you go Mike Barton giving you his thoughts he wants a Seminole to be the next head coach. Eduardo, thoughts? There are pretty good candidates out there. One is actually still in uniform here. He's been as coach for 22 seasons. His son, Mike Martin Jr., head recruiter, knows the program real well. Can provide some continuity to these young men that are in uniform right now and the ones that he's recruiting. Another one that is, I would say, Pedro Griffo from the Kansas City Royals. Caught Florida State for three seasons. He's been a farm director. He's been a scout. He's been a manager at the minor league level. He's been in the big leagues for the last six years. He does have a World Series ring. And he's a born leader. Another one is Doug McCavich. Also with a lot of history at Florida State. Another one that is rumored is Link Jarrett. He right now 
got his team. UNC Greensboro. UNC Greensboro last year to the regionals. So he's proven at the Division I level. And another one is Coach Johnson from Chipola Junior College, which has also been rumored to be one of the five to be getting interviewed at Florida State. Well, he just named a lot of Seminoles. That's for sure, and, and that was one thing that Mike Martin just said. There's milestone wins over the way. We talked about the first against Miami, number 2,000 against Virginia Tech just last weekend, 1976. That broke Augie Garrido's record last year against Clemson. It's a lucrative job, I'll tell you that. It's a, it's a top-10 job, without a doubt. It, it is really a top-10 job. It's, I understand people are going to say he's never won it. I don't care. He has been more consistent in this sport than anybody ever has. You don't win 40 games a year for 40 years because I know we're not too far into this one, but I bet you he's going to win 40 again this year. Alex Sanchez will pinch hit for Cooper Swanson in the two-hole. Alex, the freshman out of Jacksonville, Florida, hitting just 100 Kevin O'Sullivan out to talk to this big six foot five right hander, Christian Scott. Wouldn't shock me too if, if you see a name come out of nowhere for this. I mean, you know, who we talked about there for a lot of these bigger jobs. Right. We've seen lately that some coaches at big name schools, head coaches at big name schools get in the middle of it. And I can tell you this, I mean, uh, around this sport, head coach of Florida State is incredibly well thought of. You've got support. You've got incredible fan support. You play in a big-time league, and you're in the state of Florida. So from a recruiting standpoint, you like, you got a lot of building things that you don't have at other places. And with the launch of the ACC Network next year, that does not hurt either. I mean, you, now you have more visibility at that same time. It's a big-time job. Hey, one thing that's happened lately is Florida's had Florida State's number. They've won eight yep. straight against the Seminoles in 13 of the last 14. That's kind of a shocking number. I don't know. When you look at the teams that Florida has been able to field out there and the pitching that they've had to be able to do that, you got the singers. Kowars. Kowars. Faedos. I mean, Puck. these are dominating guys. Puck. It just goes down the line. That gives a lot of credit to what Coach O'Sullivan's been able to do recruiting. A 13 of 14. Listen, Florida State had been coming in here with a ragtag bunch. I mean, they've been coming in here with some, you know, regional, super regional teams. I guess that's more of a statement about how good Florida's been. Four straight trips to Omaha. They won it all two years ago. It was fantastic. Gutsy performance. The other guy that was great in that College World Series, Eddie, was Tyler Dyson. Yes. Came in and pitched that game, the clinching game against LSU. And and that's the one, when you look at their weekend rotation right now, Mesa's been good, left, which has been good. Dyson's been okay. He's been fine. But for Florida to really have a chance, I think Dyson is the one guy that, that – that you want to see look more like the guy that, that he did two years ago. It was a little bit up and down last year. The stuff's clearly there because when What's it's right, it's though? next level. Uh, it's just the stuff's been inconsistent. Fastball's been there. He was back up. I mean, he's mid-90s again. Um, it just hasn't always translated to the game. Listen, I mean, it's numbers aren't bad. I mean, when you look at Dyson so far, it's a 357 ERA, but he's walked 10 guys in 17 and two-thirds. That's the biggest one that jumps out right now. But that stuff is so good. If he just trusts it, I mean, you could see six, seven, eight weeks to where he's going out and is as dominant as we saw him against LSU a few years ago. He's not light on stuff. 3-2, and that one's upstairs. First and second with one out, and here comes the three-hole hitter, Mendoza. But I think he's going to have to wait a moment because Kevin O'Sullivan will make a change as he heads to the mound. So the coach making a change. The Gators will see, use their third pitcher of the night when we come back. 
Tomorrow, the SEC Men's Basketball Tournament tips off with the first round at Bridgestone Arena in Nashville, Tennessee. First up, Missouri takes on Georgia, 7 Eastern. Then the nightcap features the Aggies and the Commodores, both games right here on the network and the ESPN app. And LSU, the number one seed. I don't think anybody saw that one coming at the beginning of the year. South Carolina, the double bye as well, a team that really struggled in non-conference play. But double-digit wins in the league. And, of course, Tennessee and Kentucky round out the top four seeds. New pitcher on the mound for the Florida Gators. The young right-hander, Nolan Crist, just a freshman out of Locust Grove, Georgia. This is a guy that's busted onto the scene. He has converted all seven save situations. He's thrown eight innings, seven strikeouts, no walks. Opponents hit 200 against him. What has made him so successful? Well, I tell you what, this is another one that is supposed to be a high school senior. Graduated early, came in and has moved into this closer's role as quick as you could ask anybody to do it. He's fearless, and that's the one thing that Kevin O'Sullivan talks about, why they were comfortable putting him in that position. And obviously not a safe situation, Eddie, but a really high leverage situation. And they had talked about wanting to stretch Crisp out a little bit, potentially be a two-inning guy or more at the back end. Now a good opportunity to do it. Facing the All-American Mendoza, who drives it to the warning track in right center. That will allow Salvatore to tag up. He'll wind up at third. Boy, Mendoza just missed getting that one out of here. Yeah, and, and again, he's coming in, big-time rivalry against the number three hitter of Florida State University. Is able to throw an off-speed pitch down in the zone. Again, this is a place where Mike Martin Jr. told me before the game, any fly ball to hit center field, to hit the center field, it's going to die, especially at night. That's exactly what happened to Mendoza, and you can see the reaction. Another guy needs to be careful with, Elijah Cabell, the cleanup hitter. Five home runs on the year. One and one to count. Cabell initially had committed to, to uh, LSU was a late addition to this Florida State roster. Boy, are they glad to have him. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> That's like the trade deadline deal that comes up big for everybody. Freshman hitting four hole with five home runs already, and he's dented your head coach's car. That's a good combination. <laughs> and, you know, he projects out to be maybe the center fielder of the future in left field right now because J.C. Flowers is out there. It's a really good outfield for Florida State. Robbie Martin in right, Flowers in center. That's a good take. 2-1 take from a freshman on a slider when you know he's dialed up in this situation. They know exactly who Nolan Crisp is. I mean, they realize this is a closer that's coming into the game in the fifth inning, and that was a very comfortable take on a 2-1 slider. Boy, a long fly ball to the warning track from Mendoza and then a walk to Cabell. And now it's J.C. Flowers. Talk about not letting Cabell beat you. Flowers off to a hot start. He struggled making contact this freshman and sophomore year. He's known to chase pitches out of the zone. He came up big on Friday against Virginia Tech with the bases loaded. Good power to the opposite field. There's a strike. Simmons had to actually rally twice. The first time they had to force extra innings. Then they fell behind in the tenth by two before they threw up a three spot to walk it off in the opening game against the Hokies. NFSU had a wow. doubleheader on Saturday, and they That's, were one hit. That's a great pitch right there. Count should be 1-2. Instead, 2-1 for Flowers. See how much trust and confidence he has in that off-speed pitch here. 
Lifted in the air, deep right field. Dalton to the wall, that one is out of here. J.C. Flowers with the grand slam. Well, we talked what, we, what he did on Friday against Virginia Tech. Opposite field, bases loaded, walk-off. Again, going opposite field, all batting practice, showing good power that way. J.C. Flowers coming and becoming what he can be, the athleticism. Putting it all together, fastball again, right down the middle. Let's it get deep. And he's telling that baseball, go, ball, go. Again, the 1-0 pitch was a curveball. Threw it for a strike. Yep. Then went 1-1 fastball, which should have been a strike, called the ball. Watch this pitch. They called it a strike. He's showing you he can throw it for a strike. J.C. Flowers chases a lot of pitches out of the zone. They decided to go with a 2-1 fastball. And that man right there made him pay. The Grand Slam makes it a 6-0 ball game. Seminoles out in front. This guy doing it all for the Seminoles. Not only does he hit home runs and hit game winners, he just hit a Grand Slam. And he also comes in and saves some ball games for you. J.C. Flowers. Six nothing, Florida State. Jacob Young, the top of the lineup for Florida, and they've got their work cut out now. And this has been a team that this season, anyway, has had a really tough time coming back from deficits. Again, the, the base on balls will haunt. Walk Salvatore, walk Sanchez, walk Cabell. All it takes is one swing, and that man right there is feeling the pain. Florida's had success in the fifth. Meanwhile, Florida State on the other side. They've been really good in the fifth. Just one run allowed. One two count on Young, who's 0 for 2 today. Slaps that one over to Mendoza. And that will be just the sixth error of the year. First one of the season for Mendoza. Ball to his left. <laughs> Watch how he goes to his left right here. He gets caught in between. Instead of going a little bit diagonal and cutting that ball off before that hop or catching it in a short hop, gets it in between, hits him in the heel of the glove. No opportunity, especially with the speed of Young, getting down that line. I blame KP for that. Most would. Because you pointed out how good he's been defensively. Has There's made an error all year. Right. Boom. That's why, that's why with speedsters, especially from the right side, right-handed hitters, they get down the line really quick. I like the third baseman playing pretty much even to the bag, maybe a step behind the bag, because any swinging bunt you get, you don't have to rush as much, and then you're going to be caught in between. Set it the first time up when Young was at the plate. McConnell's 0 for 2. Grounds this one back to Scalero. He will... Double clutch. Everybody's safe. I don't know what the tie-up was. It didn't look like anybody was there to cover the bag. You've got a guy on first base. You always want to turn around, look at your middle infielders, figure out who's covering second base. This is why. When Scalaro turns around, he's confused. So you got Salvatore breaking, you got Decidus breaking, and he, I know the feeling on the mound because you're worried that nobody's going to be there and you balk. If you don't know who's going to get there, a lot of times you'll see the reaction that you just saw from Jonas Scalaro, and that's indecision. Do I throw it? Don't I throw it? It's easy to say just let it go, but in that case you could see he just wasn't quite sure it was going to be there. Okay, before the pitch is even thrown, they make contact. Who am I going to Absolutely. throw it to? Well, DeSantis was the guy covering he had made contact with him. It's my ball. But watch the say it is a shortstop. Ball's hit that way. But now he he sees that that ball might get past Scalaro. So he now moves in a little bit. That hesitation right there cost the play at second base. And because it was to his right instead of being right at the pitcher, he then hesitated and he was in no man's land right there. 
Okay, but, but here's my thing, okay? If, if DeSantis is playing that far into the six hole, which he is, he shouldn't be covering anyway. Because if the ball is hit hard, he's got no chance to get there. I mean, that's one. If he's going to play that far in the six hole, I understand that he said, I've got it. That also has to be one to where if, if, if your second baseman is significantly closer to the bag, like Salvatore was right there, that's a long way for DeSantis to go. You know what I love about this? Mike Martin he's goes teaching. out there. He's teaching. Yes. He is teaching Absolutely. right now. He's not losing his cool. Even if it would be a one nothing game, he'll teach right there. Now these two guys converse. They get together with it, Salvatore and DeSantis. Again, when you have a freshman at shortstop, these things will happen. You got to make sure you understand who, what the coverage is and who the hitter is during that pitch. Of course, Salvatore, the second baseman, started all 62 games last year at short. Short, yes. That'll go down. It's just a fielder's choice, so two on, nobody out for the Gators. And here's Nelson Maldonado. Right man at the plate, your coach O'Sullivan. Try to get back in and at least get a couple runs here. Put a crooked number up. Ten extra base hits among his 23 hits to date, including a team best seven doubles. Maldonado out of Tampa, Florida, with 23 career home runs and 122 career RBIs. say no again this and I understand what they're trying to do they need base runners but this is right now your best hitter with no outs lefty on the mound I want Maldonado to swing that bat I want him at second base create some damage with it and not give away outs right now he's not known for his bunting he's known for swinging that stick well, and he can make it 6-3 real quick, too. Better spike this pitch if you're throwing a curveball. It's a great take also. Good block. A young freshman, but even a better take by Maldonado. Last weekend against Yale, Maldonado went 6 for 11, a couple of doubles, two home runs, scored five runs. Here comes a changeup. That's another really good take. It really is. Because 2-2 two -two count, that's exactly where you want to throw it. Started at the knees. It looks like a strike. Ideally, you want the movement of the changeup to take it down and out of the zone, and you either get a rollover ground ball or a swing through. Maldonado's gone from 1-2 to 3-2 on two pretty good pitchers' pitches. I'd love to see right now a pitch a fastball up in the zone. I know it's dangerous to go up there, but everything has been down and soft. It went up. All right, you're three for three. Let's see how big you are. <laughs> three for three? You're going is three in a row. Come on. Well, now you sped up his bat. Now you go change up. Nobody out, two runners on. Fastball. Good thing is the uh, Hilo said 57. <laughs> so you're four <laughs> I'm going to take a mulligan. <laughs> Blame it on the gun. <laughs> Eighth pitch of this at bat coming up. This is where the experience of Maldonado comes in. He's protecting the plate. They're loaded. What about that? How about this inning? 
An error got Young on, then a fielder's choice. It should have been a double play ball by McConnell. He's safe at first. Now Maldonado walks. Ball hasn't left the infield yet. Callie Lau will step in. The Gators cleanup hitter with a couple of home runs on the season. He is one for two today. His average sits at 355. Florida's big inning all year has been this one, the fifth. See if they can push a couple across here. One run will come in. They've got some runners tied up. That one gets away from Mendoza. McConnell will score. Everybody moves up 90 feet. It's a 6-2 ball game. It's a pretty good job to start. I mean, the freshman, Calilau, who we've talked about just how well he can handle the bat, this time serves it out to center. Nelson Maldonado was the runner on first base, and, and he was, in this case, he was running McConnell off at third. McConnell wasn't going anywhere. Craig Bell held him right there, and it seemed like maybe the game sped up a little bit in center field because J.C. Flowers did not see that. If he was the second base, it's an out. Right, but... Then again, he didn't see the jump that McConnell got at second base. Which Agreed. Done. And because of that, Nelson did not see it also. Absolutely right. That goes as a single and an error on J.C. Flowers on the throw to third. And the mistake by Maldonado actually came up big for Florida right there. Two runs, potential now with no outs. High percentage of getting these two runs in. Two and zero oh on Will Dalton. Dalton has doubled. One for two today. It's good. Power is real right here, though. Power is real for Dalton. Well, it's always good. If you're going to slump, slump early. That's been my belief because he's already raised his average 10 points with one hit today. <laughs> Looks a lot better. Yeah. He's, you have the feeling, too, that for Dalton, I mean, he could go weak and hit five, six. I'd let him hit right here. You're down four. I get it. But this could be good psychologically for him. We'll find out. It's another ball. And they're loaded again. Clayton Kwiatkowski, the junior left-hander, looks like he's about to make his way onto McKeithen Stadium. Well, six nothing, Florida State coming in the bottom of the fifth, and the Seminoles entered today with a number one fielding percentage in all of college baseball. Did not look that way so far in this inning. It's an error by Drew Mendoza, his first of the year. That starts the inning. And off the bat, this looks to be potentially a double play. Jonas Valero doesn't know who's covering second base. They get no outs. GC Flowers on a play where they potentially could have thrown Nelson Maldonado out. Instead, that ball goes into the third base dugout or beside it. That scores another run. Still nobody out. Gators have scored two already, and the bases are loaded. And it, we, we talked about the teaching moment when Mike Martin went out there just after Jonas Galaro had turned around. Think about how that changes the inning. Even if it just gets one, you get one out right there, totally changes the inning. Instead, Seminoles don't have any yet. Florida looks like a totally different team right now. And you've only forced them to hit one ball out of the infield. Only ball yeah. out of the infield is a single to center field by Cali Lau. That's it. Well, the bases are loaded as Clayton Kwiatkowski Takes over the junior left-hander out of Tampa, Florida. Witkowski, no runs, 
allowed in the first seven innings pitch this year. Last outing was against Virginia Tech over the weekend. A little touched up against the Hokies in that one. But now he will face Austin Langworthy, another guy that's really been struggling, but certainly you got to be worried about him if you're the Seminoles. He has been a clutch performer for the Gators in the past. Florida's hit four grand slams this year. Three came in the same game against Winthrop back on March 3rd, which tied an NCAA record. How about that? Three grand salamis in one game. Usually win those. They held on. <laughs> Base is loaded. Maldonado. Cali Lau. Dalton. Man the bases for the Gators. 0-2 pitch on the way to Langworthy. That's just off the plate. Fantastic going from the windup. Not from the stretch. Cali Lau should be getting a nice secondary at second base. Low roller that will get into foul territory. Do you see anything in Langworthy's swing right now that causes you some concern? Do you see some stuff up there? See how he drops his hands a little bit on that hitch. And then if you look at what, Kwi uh, 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 what uh, Kwiatkowski's doing now with that slider, Guy drops the hands a little bit, then comes right back up and goes straight from up down. Really good on the inside part of the plate. Scuffled a little bit away. Choked up. Swing and a miss. First out of the inning. That was a really good pitch by Kwiatkowski. Back to what Eddie was talking about, because it, it's, it's interesting. It, it, when, when Langworthy, wa watch the swing path here. Those hands get so high, and then it just it seems like he's going down at everything, especially when the breaking ball comes in right there. Lunging at it a little bit, the hands are really high. Then he falls back. Yeah, it, it's and you'll see, we've seen over the last three years, like Langworthy can get smoking hot for a few weeks. And I think that's when those hands are in the right position time in and time out. But it's that movement. Well, you talked about Calada. Well, there's very little movement in that swing right now. The hands are just set, and so there's less things that can go wrong as the pitch comes in. Here's Fabian. That Lost one up. gets away from Nelson, and that'll get a run home. Nelson looking for the fastball. Rutkowski throws the breaking pitch. Florida State getting Florida right back in this game. Watch, he's looking for the fastball instead, gets crossed up. Not a good feeling if you're a catcher. Now you have to be careful. Dangerous hitter at the plate, left on right. Young freshman's been taking some really tough pitches. Now a 6-3 game. Callie allows it over at third. Will Dalton over at second. I'll tell you this. Could get very loud right here. Another one gets past Nelson at 6-4. Watch the glove of Matthew Nelson when he goes to block this. He kind of gets caught right in the middle of it. And the, the one thing as a catcher that you usually don't expect to see, and it, it, there's not as much time to react, is that fastball that's down in the dirt. So he's got to go a little bit further. He doesn't have as much time to react, and then that glove just didn't get turned around. If you're framing it, you want that glove to move that way. But when he goes to block, it has to turn over. It was late doing it. The ball goes all the way to the backstop. But look what it does. He has this 
He puts the mitt out there. He puts the mitt out there for the target. Then he brings it back like a hitch where he turns his wrist right, right. to then, and then go after the ball again. That's a good point. And no, that's a real anything point. that's not soft, there's no way that he can get back in time to even put a mitt on it. Watch. He starts out there, then brings it back right there. Hides it, then brings it back out again. I mean, there's no way that he can move yeah. his body and get there in time to block that ball. That, that's the catching equivalent of what we were talking about with Langworthy's swing. It's the exact same thing to where there's more moving parts than you want. It's harder to react to it, and it, it is. It's like a hitch back behind the plate. It's a hitch with that glove, and then it's so much harder. If it's not where you think it's going to be, your glove's already moving in an opposite direction. That, that's something that you, you got to clean up because it just mechanically is not what you want to do back there. Pinch hitter coming up for the Florida Gators, Kirby McMullen. Junior out of Ocala, Florida, Forest High School. 5'11", 195 will step in. McMullen on the year. This will be his ninth at bat. Does have a home run and five runs batted in. Well, the changes this year in college baseball mimicking what we've seen done in the major leagues is a limitation on mound visits, whether it's coming from the bench or, in that case, whether it's coming from the catcher behind home plate. I think that's exactly what Matthew Nelson was doing right there, was asking whether or not, asking how many visits they had had. And you can see Mike Martin motion to the home plate umpire, Derek Malik on his way out there to ask the same thing. How many are we at? What a great ending for Florida. After allowing four in the top half of the fifth inning, answer back with four any which way possible. A lot of fortune with the error, the walks, capitalizing on all the Florida State mistakes. Hey, what, for Florida State, you're up 6 nothing midway through this game, and you know you've got undefeated NC State looking at you. This weekend for three on the road. This is one of those games. I know it's early in the season, but still, in this setting, this is one of those that you think you you really need to, to close out. And it's that man's last visit to Gainesville. I mean, there's one person that wants to leave here and take that drive up I-75 to I-10 on a happy note. It's Mike Martin. They don't seem quite as giving as Kevin O'Sullivan was before the game. No. <laughs> They're not as worried least, about the last visit right now. He's not going on the trip to Canada with Coach Martin. Nope. Nope. Sorry. <laughs> you don't get a go. <laughs> Florida has put together 33 runs in the fifth inning this year. That's 23% of their runs scored have been in this frame. So Mike Martin will make the change. So Chase Haney will enter the game. Boy, 6'6", 225-pound frame. The redshirt junior at a Winter Garden, Florida. Windermere Prep High School. and He will roll into a, another dicey situation. 6-4 ball game, only one out. This whole inning got rolling in the wrong direction for the Seminoles on this error to start things off by Mendoza over at third base. And then how about this, what looked like a, they're never easy on the comebackers to the mound, but should have been a double play ball. And then this one gets away from Mendoza at third on the throw by Flowers. And then a couple of mix-ups behind the plate. Allow a couple of runs to score on two separate occasions. And the next thing you know, a 6-4 ball game. And listen, Florida State had five errors on the year. They have had two this inning. And one that won't go down as an error. I mean, the, the throw that didn't go to second base on the ground ball, but, but definitely mentally is right there. Look at that. Four wild pitches on the season two tonight. Two in this inning. 
five errors on the season coming in tonight. Two so far. That's why Florida's back in this game. They've got one hit. One ball has left the infield. Gators have scored four runs, and there's still two guys on and just one out. That's why you can't relax. Even if you're right. up 6 nothing, you still have to stay focused. Again, big-time learning curve for a lot of the young players on both sides. Well, Haney will come in with a 1.5 ERA, has one save this season. One thing you want to do if you're a right-handed hitter, every time you see a side armor like that come into the game, is focus on hitting the ball to the right side of the field. If they throw you the slider, you have enough room to be out early and still pull it. There you go. Through that 5-6 hole, we'll get a run in, throw to third, not in time. It's 6-5, and the Gators keep it rolling here in the fifth. Talk about a clutch pitch hit. Coming off the bench. Two-seamer runs in on him, and he gets those hands in. Misses in, brings those hands in, keeps the ball fair. Perfect spot. Good exit velocity. Great base running right here. Yes. And again, first and third, the Gators continue that line. Yeah, Judd Fabian, the freshman, standing on first base, and that entire play was in front of him. Ball gets out to Elijah Cabell, the left fielder for Florida State, and Fabian goes first to third on it. The butt, foul ball. That ball hit him off the, out of the box? No, it was close. I thought it may be fair. No, oh, it hit him. Bounced no, I know. I don't him. think it did, but I thought ultimately, yeah, it's close. It's close and it's close, and at this point, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> but let's, let's continue to talk off? about it, though. Yeah, it's a <laughs> double close. <laughs> talk about how close it really was. That's not close. Play at the plate. Got him. Fabian is thrown out, trying to score the second out of the inning. Boy, Haney threw a 93-mile-an-hour fastball. A sink. <laughs> From 40 feet away. Yes, he did, but a little too hard right back to Haney. Got to give a lot of credit to yes. Nelson on that one. That time he did not hitch. No. At oh. all. If he would have hitched, he was in trouble. That's the one you got to show him. Honestly, is watch how quick you can be with that glove because the glove's all the way out there. It was turned out a little bit, but, I mean, as a catcher, that's about as hard a throw as you have to handle on that. you got to go backhand side, then spin and make the tag all the way on that side. That, that's a run saver right there for Matthew Nelson. And I wonder if the umpire crew's not getting together to talk about one of the changes in college baseball and the obstruction rule where the defensive player cannot block a base without clear possession of the ball or an attempt to get the ball. So I think they're going to try to maybe take a look to see if that was necessarily the case here. And the idea of this one is you got to make sure you give them a path. If, if the throw takes a catcher in... To the path of the slide, then that's one thing. Watch the left foot, though, Matthew Nelson, which is. Oh, he covered that. He covered that play. I'm gonna tell you this, based on the way that the rule is written and the way it's it's supposed to be interpreted, he should be safe. See that left foot right there? We lost sight of it. That could play into the decision of the umpires. From this angle, it's really difficult to tell. But that left foot is actually a little bit behind the plate, giving him the front part of that plate right there. I think, sliver. Yeah, just a sliver of it. I think the other thing, and this is why I think it's hard for a for an umpire to make a decision, okay? So it didn't necessarily start there. He ended up covering the plate when he went, went to make the play. He also had to reach a long way forward. So I mean, maybe your left leg just normally does it. When he goes to reach, maybe his left leg kicks out. I don't know that there was necessarily intent to to block the plate. 
but the way that the rule is written, you could definitely, you could definitely call the runner safe on this. No doubt. We actually, when we were going over the rules before the season started, the new rules, we had video very similar to this with a position player reaching behind him with his right. foot in front of the bag. And we got into a huge discussion, is that a legal play or not? But as the rule is written, that should be a safe runner at the plate. Should be, and what a what a turn of events. Yeah, I guess. Right here, but. I'm the Gators right now. I think I have a pretty good, darn good case. May have been safe otherwise. Tags him there before he gets Give him on the back leg. Yeah. You know, when SEC baseball gets started this year, they're going to uh, use centralized video review process for the conference games. A replay official in the SEC Video Center located in the conference office in Birmingham will review plays in those conference games and render decisions that will be communicated to the on-site umpire crew. So it kind of takes it out of their hands, but they're going to say he's out. So the call stands. But for those SEC baseball fans, they will see a system in place during conference games very similar to what the major league uses I get too and it's now that the mound visits similar to what you see in major league baseball there's no more third to first move from a pickoff standpoint similar to what we've seen in major league baseball and obviously now at least within the SEC the way that the replay process is handled Do you guys like the call? I mean, not necessarily the call at the plate, but the decision to bunt. I was okay with that, honestly. I mean, it's a, it's a safety squeeze with one out. Brady Smith had a hard time this year. He's hitting the buck eighty nine coming into the game. Hey, trying to tie it. I mean, really, just from a safety standpoint, he bunted it to the one place that you can't. And you have a ground ball pitcher on the mound, side armor like that, yeah. good double play candidate. Yeah, you want this guy to at least have an opportunity. One way or another with a runner at second, potentially, that runner would have scored. Big swing and a miss, and the Seminoles get out of this. A good inning, though, for Florida. They're right back in at a five spot on the board. 6-5 our score after five here in Gainesville, Florida. A four spot by the Knolls in the fifth. They were trumped by one by the Gators. But overall, it's a 6-5 Seminole advantage trying to break this eight-game losing streak to the Gators as we head to the sixth inning. And Robbie Martin, the right fielder, will lead things off for Florida State. Nolan Crisps at 33 minutes. That ball is touched out to center. But Fabian is there. Well, here's what happened in the fifth inning. J.C. Flowers hit the grand slam. Then in the bottom of the inning, five runs for Florida, three walks, a couple of wild pitches, two errors. I guess you can score them different ways. <laughs> you get four on one swing. Florida scored them about every other way in, in their half. But 6-5 here and. Dave, you talk about if Nolan Crisp had his hit for a half hour in between the last time he was out there. He also did something when he came into the ballgame he hasn't done yet in his collegiate career, and that's entering the, in the middle of an inning, which is important too. One is to stretch him out, which I think you'll see, and it wouldn't surprise me if he goes not just this inning but the inning to follow just to stretch that pitch count up. But the other is there's going to be spots he's going to have to come in when there's traffic and there's things going on, and now he can cross that one off the list. Matthew Nelson 0 for 2 today, average down to 211. See that hit yeah. set right there? Little timing mechanism for him to try to get the hitter off balance. Double leg kick. He 
Okay, so what do you got on that one? I know Major League Baseball's been talking about a few things right now, which, you know, the, the shift, and, and there's some things in the Atlantic League this year, which I think are really interesting. They're moving the mound back two feet. They're not going to let them shift. I should ask you, how do you feel about that as a pitcher, <laughs> two feet? Well, but I'm talking about this, <laughs> the, the ability to, out of the windup, to slow yourself down in the middle of it. With Obviously, you're doing it because you want the hitter's timing to be different. I mean, you think that's something they should look at, too? No. Yeah, it's a good talk. I like it. I like it because okay. hitters do have leg kicks. Hitters do have tap. They tap. Hitters sometimes don't have leg kicks. So you're already taking an advantage away from a pitcher, which is its timing, especially a pitcher. If he throws everything hard, he can mix it up like that. I'm okay with it. I'll tell you what, this kid reminds me. I'm going old school here. Mississippi State, Jeff Brantley. Really? Cowboy. I'm going to go back to what you said, moving the mound back two feet. From a pitcher standpoint, you are trained pretty much from the time you're a teenager at 60 feet, six inches. Do you think that cause has added stress on your arm? I mean, from a – how, how do you feel about it? Honestly, I think it's going to be really interesting just to see what the data is. Um, if there, any of the proposed changes that they're talking about, outlawing the shift, I hate that idea. Um, I think – I think that potentially moving the mound back a little bit has some validity to move it back two feet. Now, does it make much of a difference? I, I don't know. But the reality is, Eddie, I mean, you, you see it every week. Major League Games is a very different game now than it was six years ago, seven years ago. It There's is. So much more swing and miss. I get And the it. stuff continues to get better. The stuff isn't going to get worse. I think that's the one thing that's an absolute in this. I mean, I don't, guys aren't going to be throwing 120 in five years, but it's, it's not going to go backwards. I mean, the training is only going to get better, and velocity is only going to continue to go up. And, and the beauty of it is all we talk about is the pitchers. Well, the hitters also, when it comes to timing mechanism, now you're talking about moving that to 62 feet 6 inches where hitters are already used to the timing. Uh, when do they when do they start their uh, their motion also? It, it's it's going to be a big difference and a big, uh, a big adjustment also for the hitters, let alone dealing with pitchers' arms in length of games. Yep. I think it's actually, it might extend games if you let more offense in the game. If you're looking for action, oh, I agree. it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be a lot more difficult. And if you do that, you're going to have to then open up the strike zone a little bit more. I just, I, I, I like the idea that they're looking at it. I, I, think it. I think it makes sense to take a look at it. I mean, clearly it's not something that would be put into place in a very short period of time, but I'm open to seeing what the data says. The Sadis, 2-0 on him. There's a strike, 2-1. and one. You know, We've talked a lot about Nander and his ability just to youngster at shortstop and his power. I mean, the other part of him is the fact that he's a switch hitter. Right. Who can run? Now let's find out if Mike Martin here puts Matthew Nelson, the catcher, in motion. 3-1. I keep him right there. You run him here? No. Really? You guys, great conversations. <laughs> I keep it simple, yes. No, I really? <laughs> <laughs> that means he would. Free two to DeSantis. <laughs> and one of the big reasons is DeSantis is a better hitter from the left side, uh, from the right side than the left side. You have that hole there that's open in that situation. You have a catcher at first base. That's the guy you want. You want to protect his legs a little bit. Up and away. Two on now with one out. And the lineup will sw uh, flip to Mike Salvatore, who was doubled, walked, and flew out to center field. Well, for a long time, I think the folks that follow Gator baseball have appreciated what Kevin O'Sullivan has done with this program. Four straight trips to Omaha, a national championship, and well, he was uh, certainly. Yeah, you may not think of it tonight, <laughs> right? But you start coming down there in the middle of May, rains hit at the same time. Yeah, it's. Uh... I've been here, Kyle. 
You have for the for the super regionals, and it it can get toasty, oh. especially when they they say let's play at one o'clock. Yeah, exactly. Sun coming right into your face in the in the booth in the booth. That's the one thing. I mean, if 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 you could make a phone call and make sure that the booth does not face directly into the. <laughs> yeah. And if we can bump this thing up to sixty six million and just spin the booth a little bit, that'd be great. <laughs> Or just sixty-five million, ten thousand. <laughs> just put a little <laughs> lost in the contingency. I'll be right in the middle of it. Got some new ballparks up in the southeastern conference. Mississippi State, the new dude, is uh, one spectacular venue. Uh, had a chance to tour that a couple months ago. And it's just one of those facilities that's hard to believe it's a college baseball stadium. It is so nice. And Kentucky, they went out and built themselves a new ballpark as well, changed locations, Cliff Hagen Stadium, 50 years of baseball there. And it was time. It was time to to move on from Cliff Hagen. But they've got a new one that is fantastic as well. So uh, a lot of turnover in terms of stadiums in the Southeastern Conference. Hard to believe where college baseball is today from when you were playing baseball. I mean, Dick Hauser Stadium was kind of like that, and Duty Noble were the two meccas in baseball, really. Texas could throw them in there, but yeah. there weren't many. No, when they made the new Alex Box Stadium in Baton Rouge, they're like, wow. It's gotten better. Ground ball through the left side off the bat of Salvatore. That'll get a run home. And it's a 7-5 ball game. So Alatoff comes in, throws a pitch, and it is hit into left field for an RBI for Salvatore, which will be his 13th of the year. He'll get a lot of time to settle in. First pitch fastball, but it's center cut. I mean, it's about belt high right down the middle. Brady McConnell, the shortstop, shaded a little bit up the middle. Give a lot of credit to Nelson, also the catcher. Great secondary, yeah. second base, something that Coach Martin prides himself in making sure the runners get great secondaries to put themselves in position like that. Alex Sanchez came in back in the fifth inning to hit for Cooper Swanson, stays in. He walked and scored in that four-run fifth inning for the Seminoles. Another top ten game tonight out of conference. Ole Miss and Louisville go at it. Number seven, Louisville. Number nine, Ole Miss. It was a 4-3 Cardinal win in ten innings. Ground ball out to first. Can they turn low throw? They do get the out at second base, but runners will be at the corners. Callalau right here makes this play and I don't know why he did a 360 on it. He catches the ball pretty much in front of it. If he does that, you got to then turn your feet like a second baseman when you're going to throw to second. A lot easier throw. You don't have to spin yourself around. You can make a nice throw to that target. Don't assume two. Get one first. Try to rush it. That's where you can make some errors. Drew Mendoza steps in. Runners at first and third with two out. Mendoza today doubled and out at an RBI back in the first. Walked and flew out to center his last time up. Two off-speed pitches, both of them up. There's a runner at third base. Pitcher knows that, doesn't want to try to spike it, put the pressure on Smith behind the plate. You're a hitter, you have to be looking fastball. Anything soft you can take. Might go with the changeup here to try to get him out front. There it was, 73. I think he crossed him up a little bit there. God, look how big Doze is at the plate. Jeez. Looking for a pitch over there, then. At least he was looking for something soft. Boy. 
and this is the beauty. You still don't want it to look soft right here, but when, once you've seen four in a row, even on 3-0, you can sell out soft. Look for something up. If he throws a fastball, so be it. And then it'll go to 3-2. Now they're loaded. And the cleanup hitter, Elijah Cabell. Six walks in the last two innings. Inning and two thirds that Florida has given up to the Knolls. Team that walks a lot already coming into this game. against Winthrop. University of Florida had three grand slams. Florida State already has one in this game. The last inning. Cabell with an opportunity. Great power at the plate. J.C. Flowers hit the grand slam for the Seminoles. So far, Cabell's pretty good takes on off-speed pitches. He's seen it early. I've been Impressed with everything we've seen at the plate from him so far. I know it hasn't shown in the hit column tonight, but he just he looks so comfortable for a kid of this age. Especially in spots when you think maybe you're going to think a, a little bit too much. He hasn't done that. 14th round selection by the Brewers and last summer's draft. to third. Pena across the diamond. And that will do it. Seminoles will leave them loaded, but they do pick up a run. Push their lead to 7-5 to five over the Gators. State leading Florida by two. Of course, across the country, some great baseball. Can Oregon State defend their national championship? They've got one of their premier players in the entire country in Adley Rushman. KP had a chance to visit with him earlier this spring. How do you handle a draft? How do you handle the, the buzz and the talk and all of the stuff that is just going to be there because of what what's coming next? Yeah, uh, for me, it's just trying to focus on the process of, of you know, being the best version of myself I can be, right? Um, if I can focus on my teammates, focus on winning with our team, you know, I think it takes a lot of the noise out of the equation um, because, you know, all the draft stuff, as much as I like to think that, it's all in my control, you know, it's not, right? So I got to control what I can control, and that is this team this year and, um, you know, how I go about my business every day. And if I can do that, then I can be content with anything that comes, you know, in June. Spotlight on him, spotlight on the Beavers, spotlight really out west right now. There's so much talent. Andrew Vaughn, another guy last year was incredible, and he has not – backed off this year at all. Look at his numbers. The starts for both those guys have, have been obscene so far. I mean, Rutschman coming off a year to where he had more hits in the College World Series than anybody's ever had. Most outstanding player. More RBIs in a season than anybody at Oregon State has ever had. And this year, Rutschman's slugging 841. Vaughn is slugging 932 at this point. <laughs> it's <decent>. Wow. Golly. <laughs> Vaughn is just... Uh, when he steps to the plate, it's like must-see TV. Yeah. Golden Spikes winner last year. And those numbers for Vaughn are after he went one for ten last weekend against LSU. So even after a weekend like that, this early in the season, Vaughn's numbers are that good. Wow, that's twice. Wow, back-to-back -back hit batters. The first one was McConnell. Now it's Maldonado. Gators need base runners, and they got him. Unbelievable in the last 
inning, I thought it was pretty much the only very creative ways that the Gators have been able to get on base. Fielders' choices, errors, you name it, walk. Last two batters hit by pitches with Kendra Callalau at the plate. Kid has a good idea. I think he's going to go to that slider a little bit more after letting go of that fastball twice. You, I mean, you thought he was going to do it at least once. I mean, just to get the mindset back of it's, it's the one thing for a two-seam guy from this slot when you're facing right-handed hitters. If it's moving too much and you're starting on the inside part of the plate, they don't move. It's going to hit them. Now back-to-back sliders after he hit the first two of the inning. Callie Lau, a couple of hits. Two for three tonight. His average now at 365. Everything's been away, away, away. See that one again from up here. It looked like he held that swing. Let's see. Oh, he went. So now it's two and two on Jeff, Cali Lau. Jeff Gosling getting that right at first base. Out to center field. Flowers on the run. Can't get it. It's past him. Martin will scoop it up in center. Two runs will score. Excuse me, one run will score to make it a 7-6 ball game. Watch where J.C. Flowers is. He's playing on the pull side right here. Kyle Lau's already proven that he goes the other way well. Ball does not travel well here at night. They were told early by Mike Martin Jr. to play in shallow, respecting the power of Kalalau right there. J.C. Flowers does not get in front of that baseball. And now you don't even have the force out at second base. Go ahead, run at second. How about a three-hit night for Kalalau? How about where they've all come? Up the middle, up the middle, right center. Just, I mean, that advanced approach that you, you just don't see a lot of freshmen have when they get to this level. Uh -oh. There's somebody that's pressing the ball. Will Dalton right there on a 1-0 breaker, an 0-1 breaking ball, excuse me. He knows he's got guys on second, third. And he was trying to hit that one to the O'Connell Center. It's it's That's when you can see he's trying to do a little, little bit too much. Problem is you want to drive the ball the other right. way. Don't want to pull it in this like situation. Like Kalanow just did. I mean, right, that, that approach. Runners at second and third. There's no, he has shown no intention right now during this at bat to drive the runner in and move the runner over from second to third. You don't have to give your at bat away, but at least hit it with authority the other way. See if he elevates here with the fast bar. He goes, tries to go back with the slider. Slow roller out to short. The state has nowhere to go. Bad jump at third base, too. Nelson Maldonado hesitated at third. The Seda is almost even a, his only play would have been the home plate. 
tied at seven. Watch this. Watch Maldonado on your screen. Hesitates right there. Say that wisely holds the baseball, keeps the force at second. That's where he wore it. Well, that'll leave a definite mark. The ribs. Austin Maldonado. It was a 6 nothing Florida State lead. It's now 7-7. Seven, seven. And not over. Two on. Runners at first and third. Nobody out. And Mike Martin going to the bullpen. Another time for Austin Pollock, the sophomore. So that'll do it for Chase Haney. All tied up here in Gainesville. Back in a moment. It has been not the prettiest of games. Each team with a couple of errors, been a bunch of walks, but at the end of the day, it's a 7-7 ball game in the bottom of the sixth inning. The Gators scoreless through the first four frames. They have picked up seven the last two innings. Nelson Maldonado was plucked in the rib cage, number 27 there in your screen. It was worth it, though, as he came in to score. New pitcher on the mound, Austin Pollock, the sophomore left-hander. Out of Tallahassee, Florida. And he is working in a, in a tight situation here. You see those six walks. It's nine point, nine and a third innings. There's the bunt by Langworthy. Only play will be over to first. It's a bad throw. Pollock threw it down the right field line. That'll get one run in. Here comes the second run as it is kicked out there in right field by Martin. It's a 9-7 game. Again, this is what you do. You force the defense. Watch Martin in right field. The bun is made. He stays there. Just takes a couple steps, courtesy steps, but he's not hustling to back up just in case that ball's overthrown. A lot of room in right field. Bad throw. Two runs score off that play. And now you get Langworthy at third base as the Gators now have a two-run lead in this one. Yeah, and it forces Florida State to bring the infield in right here, too. The other thing, we, we talked about Kalalau and, and the advanced approach at the plate. That was a really good read on a safety because it's it's what we saw earlier when Florida had a runner thrown out at home plate. It's immediately back to the pitcher. Pollock would have had plenty of time to throw him out. Instead, Kalalau waited. Throw goes down the right field line, and now Florida adds on. Fabian, base hit. Langworthy will score. Okay, my takeaway so far from this game is the freshmen. The freshmen that are playing on both sides tonight have been impressive on the bases. And right there, Fabian, the runner at third, infield in. Knows they're trying to look for that ground ball. Hits a linea right back up the middle. The Gators have put up 10 runs. And they still have nobody out. Five back in the fifth, five here in the sixth. Roberto Pena. Pena's first at bat. Came in to play some third base last inning. Corey Acton started at third, but he was pinch hit for by Kirby McMullen. Three errors by the Seminoles. And again, I think it uh, bears repeating. This is a team that led the country in fielding percentage and only had five errors. When you go on the road, see how these players react, not only at the plate, but defensively. You learn a lot about your team, and you have to then focus and teach, and that's what Mike Martin does best. Oh. 
Three and one now on Pena. Another freshman out of Caracas, Venezuela. The Cavalry Christian High School. Lifts that one out of play. His family's watching and all the turmoil that's going on in Venezuela. This is a definite relief to watch their son play. Swing and a miss, throw down to the plate. Strikeout at the plate, but a stolen base for Fabian. His fourth of the year. <laughs> Fabian just going on first move right there. Taking a chance against the left-hander. Guess right. He's kind of done it all right this year. Fabian hit 345 coming in. Five home runs. That's tops on the team. Now four stolen bases. That's tops on the team. And about as good a freshman center fielder as you're fine. Remember Brady Smith. Had a shot to right field that was caught by Martin. Mm -hmm. He has power the other way. We saw it in the College World Series also. Outfield playing in the pool. Runner goes. Fabian trying to swipe third, and he does. Now you have to be careful if you're the Seminoles for that squeeze play. <laughs> Good jump right there. Rush the throw straight in the dirt. That'll be out of play. Matthew Nelson, a freshman catcher, has thrown the ball well this year, too. He's thrown out four out of seven coming into this ball game, but Austin Pollock just not really giving him a chance. Definitely not on the stolen base at second. That one, a good throw, probably does get Fabian at third, but Fabian stole second off the pitcher. Lifted to right. That's going to drop in. Martin chases it down, but that'll get Fabian home. Martin misplays it, and Smith rounds second. He's on his way to third. Boy, everything that could go wrong for Florida State is going wrong here in the last two innings. Said it right at the beginning. Really surprised the way the defense of Florida State is playing Smith. He hits the ball the other way. This is what he does in the air. Showed good legs right here. Martin takes a bad angle to this. Instead of trying to cut it off diagonally, goes straight to it. The ball beats him to the point. And now you have a runner again at third with one out. Eleven to seven, Florida out in front after trailing six to nothing. There's the butt. That'll get another run home. Only play over to first and safe there. Boy, it's just a comedy of errors right now. This is. Eddie, you talked about it. The first time that Mike Martin's taking his team on the road. And I, I think that's the only explanation for what we've seen at this point. Because it's not it's not just the errors. I mean the route in right field was not a good route. Some of the decisions that we've seen that haven't necessarily gone as errors. And again, Florida's trying to give you an out. They'll trade a run for an out right there, and Florida State just can't do it. 
So the second consecutive time the Gators have batted around. Yeah, they're going to continue to bunt. Florida State, Florida State has not been able to defend the bunt and play clean baseball the last two innings. I do not blame the Gators at all. Till you show that you can fundamentally make the play, we will continue to bunt. And the other thing here, you got a left hander on the mound who's going to fall to that third base side anyway. We saw which way the bunt went. Brady Smith tried to push it to that side, so it's tougher for the lefty to make that play. Jacob Young, the freshman, was trying to do the exact same thing right there. Runner goes, throw down to second. And Jacob Young. Oh, I'm spun around. Young's on first. How am I doing? <laughs> Spring training for everybody. Right, right, spun around just like that. Defense, <laughs> <aren't you? laughs> uh, first stolen base of the year for Jacob Young. So Jacob Young's on second. Brady McConnell's hitting. He was the one that just tried to push a bunt to the right side. <laughs> Connell started this inning off when he was hit by a pitch. Matter of fact, back to back batters were hit to start this inning. And you try to stop the feet of Young at second base. He's moving around, he's trying to time Pollock. Coach Martin, I think, noticed the same thing. He's going out there to try to calm his defense down, but also another You know, there was a moment earlier where we were talking about how he's teaching his guys. I think this is more of a lecture. That is not a happy man out there. I think there's more challenge right here. A little wake up call right there. Still a lot of baseball left. Just seems like you look at that defense and they all put their heads down. One thing he's not going to allow these young men is to give up. Pretty good for the first four and a half innings. Slap to the right side. What will they do here? They'll send Young home. Here's the play at the plate. Not in time. That one gets past Nelson. Thirteen seven. Great piece of hitting. Again, McConnell going the other way. Pitch breaking ball. Takes what they give him. Runner at second base. A lot of speed. And then Martin right here. You got to throw this ball down. Get it to the cutoff. Give him a chance. Instead, McConnell now goes to second base. That speed, Young scores. Look how he sees the throw, reads the trajectory, and says, I got a chance here. Nelson Maldonado hit by a pitch earlier this inning came in to score. McConnell, by the way, on a 15 game hit streak. Connell's just been a stud all year for the Gators. When he started, he was a starting shortstop as a freshman last year. You just you don't see that very often at this level. Florida State has it this year, but it's a rarity. Then he got hurt, and he ended up essentially his freshman year obviously didn't go the way that he wanted to, but it was more where he had to learn from, from just watching. 
when you hear the Florida coaching staff talk about Brady McConnell, it's his maybe the most physically gifted shortstop that they've had here at Florida. Now, the numbers may not indicate it yet. What will get interesting is he's a draft eligible sophomore, and all it takes is one club to really like it and see what the upside is because there is a ton of upside in that talent level. There's power, too. We've seen a little bit this year. Two home runs already for McConnell, but he'll just he'll show you flashes that, that you don't see very often out of the shortstop position. Coming out of high school, he was considered top five shortstop prospect. That one's lifted high in the air. Shallow center. So shallow that the shortstop to Satis will make the play, and that'll be out number two. But McConnell had that wrist injury last year, and, and it just took him a while to figure out what the problem was. Actually sent him up to Atlanta, talked to the Braves yeah. team doctor, their staff, to try to figure out what was going on. And it took him a while to get it back together. It took a neurologist to figure it out. Yeah. Played in eight games last year before the injury. Callie Lau will step in. By the way, this is the ninth time this season that Florida has scored five or more runs in an inning. It's happened twice tonight. We can't see that Gator bullpen from here. It's tucked away in that left corner, but you wonder with this long break, is there going to be a change on the mound? I mean, it's been this has been a long half inning. It's two in a row. Look at that. We got a number. Ben Specked up and running right or up and throwing right now. One, two. He went around, and the inning mercifully is over for the Seminoles. They put up an eight spot. They lead it by six. Well, the Seminoles were cruising. They led six to nothing as we went to the bottom of the fifth inning, and then the wheels have completely come off the Seminole vehicle as it's now a 13-7 ball game. The Gators with a five spot in the fifth and an eight spot in our last half inning, and you see 32 minutes of baseball in the bottom of the fifth. The last inning was 26 minutes, eight runs on six hits, another error for Florida State, and two hit batters that started the whole thing. That's a big uh... Okay, how about this? Let me just, between the fifth and sixth innings, 18 runs, 10 hits, nine walks, two hit batters, and it's taken an hour and a half. It'll happen to you in the midweek sometimes. Yes, <laughs> a little bit of everything. Ben Speck, 6'1", 210-pounder, with another young arm, a freshman out of Fort Myers, Florida, makes his appearance in the first of three games between these two clubs. They'll meet in Jacksonville, and then they'll wrap up the three-game series in Tallahassee in a few weeks. J.C. Flowers, who hit himself a nice grand slam earlier today. Peter Alonzo. Peter Alonzo's got a chance to make a big league play. Yeah. Heck of a spring. Yeah. Peter Alonzo could sign a free agent linebacker deal right now, too, based on the other day. You see that? Yeah. Oh, my. Collision at first base. Well, better said, he was the wall. It's big man. Mm -hmm. There's another one. When he was here, it sounded different when it came off his bat. 
former Florida Gator that tried to hold down a starting spot in the big leagues. A couple of guys not too uh, long ago were playing right here at McKeithen Stadium. Trying to hold down first base with the Mets. And Richie Martin with the Orioles. Rule 5 pick. And DJ Stewart, former Seminole. He's also with the Orioles on their 40-man roster. DJ on the 40-man, so he was just option the other day. But you got to think Richie Martin. Richie Martin's got a real chance to make that club. I mean, if you're Rule 5 pick, if you don't make the club, you get offered yeah. back. He's also had a good offensive spring for Baltimore. Baltimore team that's going to be young and they'll keep those rule fives. Oh, wow, like this fastball now. Again, we talk about effective velocity. Yes. Yeah. 93 miles per hour is what it says there, but plays a lot higher. So talk about it because I, I, I watched the StatCast game that you did last year, one of the StatCast games you did, and I know you're doing some more this year. But explain the effective velocity, why that fastball looks a little bit different than some others. Well, from the release point that it is and the situation and where he throws it from, you look at the high spin rate that this kid has with the velocity. Yes, it says 93, but right from that same release point, the hitter perceives that velocity to be a lot higher. And the, and the reaction that the hitter has, you can tell that ball's already by him where he really thinks it is. And, and again, it's 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 pretty strong stuff, and you can see it in the first two hitters that he's faced. Well, inspect is a guy, and we can see it right now, that, that that's where he should live. He should live up in, the zone. up in the zone because you can see that the ball has more carry. We're seeing it so much more at the major league level right now. But that's where I think he'll have the most success with that fastball. He throws that four-seamer up that just holds plane all the way. That time, Robbie Martin gets enough of it to did single him a out favor. the center. He did him a favor with that off-speed pitch up. Watch, he's been living up with the fastball. The changeup. Then you can't go combo up. That has to be down yep. and away. Instead, stayed up. Gave Martin, which has been struggling offensively as of late, an opportunity to get a hit. Jonathan Foster will step in and pitch hit for the Seminoles. A senior out of LaGrange, Georgia. Actually started his collegiate career at Auburn. Played there as a freshman. One year at Chattahoochee Community College before finding his way to Tallahassee. Foster on the year, 231 hitter, three for 13 on the year. Homer and a couple of runs batted in. live at 92-93 with that fastball. Again, another freshman. We say that so many times with both these clubs, really. Ninety-one mile an hour fastball out to left. Langworthy's there to make the play. SEC opening weekend coming up. Of course, the ACC started last weekend. But Vanderbilt, Texas A&M, number two and number 22. And then you've got Mississippi State and Florida. KP and I will be here for Saturday and Sunday's tilt. And if you haven't seen JT Ginn pitch, you need to see him pitch for Mississippi State, a guy that probably should be playing professional baseball, made his way to Starkville, and he has been lights out. Some other great matchups. Alabama's off to a pretty good start. Ole Miss, though, Thomas Dillard. He is just, uh, he's ripping the baseball. Missouri and Arkansas, the Hogs again, top 10 team. Wondering how they would respond. I know you get a full off season, but, I mean, how that whole thing went down last oh, year with yeah. them, uh, you know, you just wonder 
what kind of blowback there might be from that from a team perspective. But it uh, looks like they are ready to go again here in 2019. Pollock will face Will Dalton to start things off here in the bottom of the seventh. Dalton with a couple of hits. Boosted his average up to 237 tonight. Came in at 214. Make you feel better, right? Yeah, it does. Looks a little bit better on the board. Well, that's popped a mile into the sky here in Gainesville. Salvatore. Boy. Makes the catch. We were talking about JT again, the young freshman right-hander for Mississippi State. KP, this guy is phenomenal out of the gates. What What is it about him that makes him so impressive? Well, the stuff combination is one that uh, you just don't see these kids get to college very often. The other thing is, is it is very rare for a freshman to step in on the weekend and have the consistency that JT again has had so far. 32 strikeouts, three walks this year for the freshman. There's a lot of swag. And they didn't think they were going to see that swag in Starkville. That's, that's, I mean, when the draft happened, I, I think mentally you go, all right, well, we lost that one. We'll get another one. Um, it, it shocked a lot of people that he ended up on campus. And it's a short arm, yes. and he hides the baseball really well, and it appears like it's coming out of his right ear lobe. It really does. I mean, that's from his right ear. Uh, that's how well he hides it. And, again, it's hard to pick up for hitters. Langworthy, 0 for 3 today. Austin has seen his average dip below 200. It's a 197 now. Hit on the butt, but glove by Salvatore. Two down. Some other matchups around the SEC. How about a top 25 matchup in Columbia? How about the ERA from Hancock? 0.38. And this is a shocking number as Kentucky takes on LSU. Tiger pitching an ERA of over five. Yeah, it, it, I'm quite sure what you were going to get from LSU on the mound this year. Zach Kess has just been okay on Friday. They went freshman, freshman opening weekend. That LSU pitching staff has not been great so far. It's a clean seventh, though, for the Knowles. They still trade it. Trail it. 13-7. Almost. <laughs> Freshman, when I first got here, I wanted number 11 because that was the number I was in high school. All I heard is, well, 11 has 11. And I'm like, who's 11? And then I realized, I'm like, oh, Mike Martin's 11. I better <laughs> stick with 24. Why 11? Oh, that goes back to when I was an assistant and I worked with the outfielders. Our center fielder was a guy named Jim Busby, and Buzzer always had some nickname for everybody. After about, I'd say, 15 minutes of shagging in the outfield, he screamed at me across the field, Lem, are we ever going to get to hit? And the next day, I guess seven or eight guys called me 11. 45 years later, they're still calling me 11. And you never got 11. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> I can't believe you couldn't coerce that number from the coach. Yeah, the other one worked out all right. Yes, it did. Called strike three on Carter Smith. I mean, it's, it's nuts when you start thinking about what Mike Martin did. He passed, obviously, Augie Garrido for the most wins in college baseball history. But to put it in perspective... It took Coach Garrido 48 years to win 1,975 games. It took Mike Martin 39 years and a couple of weeks to win 2,000 games. The consistency is obscene. I mean, it's just when, when the college game has gotten, honestly, it's, it's gotten tougher to win that many games. 
um, there's more parity. There's more people that are putting money into the program, and yet every year he's winning at least 40 and he's playing in the postseason. To put this in perspective, Kevin O'Sullivan is one of the premier coaches in the country, right? 12 years here at Florida. He would have to win over the next 28 seasons, 50 games a year, to get to 2,000. Think about that for a minute. That's why he was covering himself, saying, I don't think anybody's ever going <laughs> right. to win that many again. Yeah, it's a tough task. But one thing he has been is consistent. It's like turn back time. I hadn't been in Florida State for a long time. When I saw him again, he was the same guy. Hadn't changed much. You look at the practice and the way that he still teaches, it's the same. Same emphasis on pitching, defense, and base running. And so far, the defense has let him down tonight. 24 years of 50 or more wins. Mm. 161. They only schedule 56. <laughs> That's a good year. Yeah. So McGuire Weaver goes down on strikes, back-to-back -back strikeouts. But... This will be one of those games, certainly, that uh, won't sit well with him, especially having to go on the road at NC State, an undefeated team, and you had a 6 nothing lead on the road. That was the one thing. So we, we had him in Jacksonville last year, and in talking to Mike Martin before the game, as something about, do you think this is a team that potentially can get to Omaha? And it was real laid back up to that point, and his face changed. And he looked at me and said, if I don't think we got a chance to get to Omaha, I'm done coaching. And it was really straightforward. And we saw that fire when he walked out to the mound just an inning before. He is as nice a man as you'll ever be around. Well, I didn't experience it. You did. But, it, I mean, he, he can also he can, he can get on you pretty good. And he has to. Absolutely. That's his job. That's why he's so good. One, two, three inning for Ben Specs. 2,000 victories for that man. Hey, tomorrow the SEC men's basketball tournament tips off with the first round at the Bridgestone Arena in Nashville. First up, Missouri takes on the Bulldogs at 7 Eastern time. And then the nightcap features Texas A&M and the Commodores. Both games right here on the network. And you can always see them on the ESPN app. Some good games to keep an eye on. Ole Miss and Alabama, Florida and Arkansas. Well, the Gators, one of those teams a lot of people talking about. Got to have a win here. They might be on the outside looking in for the NCAA tournament. I think that they're in, personally, just because I think the league is so good this year, the SEC, that that might propel them into the field. That's just one man's opinion. Who's not on the committee? It's all right. One of these days, I'm going to be on Influencer. a committee. I, I want to be on any committee. No, you Doesn't have don't. to be on the basketball no, committee. I just want to be don't. on a committee. That's a terrible idea. <laughs> People don't ask to be on committees. They're asked to be on committees. <laughs> Nobody's asked me. I'm insulted. <laughs> Here's Pena down the right side. And that'll be a foul ball. Again, the Gators put up five in the fifth, eight in the sixth. And the Seminoles certainly helped them on both occasions. Has not been a clean game, really, by either team. Hey, tomorrow the SEC men's basketball tournament tips off with the first round at the Bridgestone Arena in Nashville. First up, Missouri takes on the Bulldogs at 7 Eastern time. And then the nightcap features Texas A&M and the Commodores. Both games right here on the network. And you can always see them on the ESPN app. Some good games to keep an eye on. Ole Miss and Alabama, Florida, and Arkansas. Boy, the Gators, one of those teams a lot of people talking about. Got to have a win here. They might be on the outside looking in for the NCAA tournament. I think that they're in, personally, just because I think the league is so good this year in the SEC that that might propel them into the field. That's just one man's opinion. Who's not on the committee? It's all right. One of these days I'm going to be on Influencer. a committee. I, I want to be on any committee. No, you Doesn't have don't. have to be on the basketball committee. No, I just want to be don't. on a committee. That's a terrible idea. <laughs> People don't ask to be on committees. They're asked to be on committees. Nobody's asked me. I'm insulted. 
Here's Pena down the right side. And that'll be a foul ball. Again, the Gators put up five in the fifth, eight in the sixth. And the Seminoles certainly helped them on both occasions. Has not been a clean game, really, by either team. I would gather that Pena's favorite player is Miguel Cabrera. Number. From Venezuela. Number. Absolutely. Chopper out to short. Low throw. Good pick over there at first base. Nico Baldor. One down. Plenty of changes. Smith stays in the game at shortstop. I, or DeSantis. I have to make a, an admission here. Um, I didn't go get a pencil. So first game, my, the bag's not exactly stacked the way it's supposed to be, right? So i got to move a little bit early. It was a horrendous decision to do the game tonight in Penn. Horrendous. You don't mind? No, you're way advanced. An iPad and the buttons and everything else. I just couldn't remember a pencil. I'll get better, Neil. Okay, this weekend I'll be better. I promise. You. Been heavy. Been heavy tonight. This is my pen. That's his pen there. And, of course, that's Captain Technology next to me. <laughs> doing a game on an iPad. I mean, this is beautiful right here. I mean, this thing is absolutely beautiful. I don't know if you see I mean, that is... Can you get that a little bit? A little bright. Get but that in the angle. There we go. Yeah, yeah get that in there. That, that's that's old school technology, or new school. I'm, I'm old school There's technology. The right there. See? see? You can, yeah. you can KP's see no school. Moving out of the shot. <laughs> I don't even want to be in this. Here's yours. Right over here as I can. <laughs> don't touch my stuff. <laughs> Trust us. We don't want to touch it. Not with the pen. But you do have some It's a good-looking scoreboard. Yeah, I mean, it's legible. That one is off the bat of Jacob Young, the leadoff man, foul territory. Why are you looking at my iPad now? No, I was stretching. Single after that. Thank you. So Jacob Young, the leadoff man for the Gators, who was inserted into the starting lineup at the end of February and has just been on a tear, inserted on February 27th, and since that point, it's hitting 425 with a couple of home runs. That's another hit tonight. Rushman was an outfielder in high school. Comes in, top program. Now he's a second baseman. And has a second hit. You know, he. it, it, it was funny having Kevin O'Sullivan tell us the story about they asked him, trying to find a spot for him, and the only spot really was second base. And he didn't have a second baseman's glove. He said they found one for him. Tried to work on other working on his throw. He's got the long arm from being in an outfielder, so they're working on his throws, all kinds of equipment. It's like Kevin Costner and Tin Cup with all the tools he's right. got using. <laughs> but they plug him at the top of the lineup, and he's he's reached base three more times tonight. Okay, so you just asking you ever played second base? Eh. <laughs> all right, well, you are now. <laughs> Regardless of what your answer is, you're now a second baseman. And, of course, a, a guy that doesn't normally fit the Florida recruit. Wasn't, wasn't high profile. Yeah. Being fast certainly helps. From the right side. You don't see a lot of speedsters from the right side. 
put the ball in play and go. McConnell's one for four today. Make it two for five. Gators bats are waking up. 14 hits. And now the bases are loaded for Nelson Maldonado. Maldonado one for three today. 358 average, couple of home runs on the year. Senior out of Tampa, Florida. Really good matchup for him, too. Especially now, count 1 0. Flowers shallow in center field. That's a souvenir. Twenty-three career home runs for Nelson Maldonado. Base hit through the left side. That'll get a run home. Fourteen to seven. Levin's had a righty warming up at the pen for a while. He will stay with his lefty. And Callow has been brilliant so far with three hits on the night. Three for five with two strikeouts. Average up to 369. That's going to be a tough get. Martin watches that one. That's out of here. Grand slam. How about a night for you, young man? This right here, fellas, it's impressive, and I've said it. Watching a lot of video of Catalao coming into this game, preparing, seeing how quiet he is. Look at the hands and the head. Doesn't move him at all. Doesn't hide him from the screen whatsoever. He knew it as soon as he hit it. Keeps that head down. See the chin going shoulder to shoulder. Perfectly done. Talk about being a diaper dandy. Oh, my. You want to know something? I mean, so often you see a bench reaction when the ball comes off the bat when it's a home run and everybody starts going crazy. Guys aren't used to seeing that ball go out. You just you don't see that many people that, that at this level that can take. Watch the bench. Watch this. I mean, I know his hands don't even move, but uh, yeah, yeah. I think it's an out. You're not used to seeing that ball go out. I mean, everybody thinks it's out. I mean, they're jumping up and down, especially in a ball game like this. He just he does things differently than most. Oh, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I didn't even look at the bench, and you were even saying, look at the bench, look at the bench. I'm just seeing how quiet he is. Yeah. You look at the chin. It goes from shoulder to shoulder. That right there, I mean, nice balance throughout. No hesitation, but these guys are going to get used to it. They're going to see yes. that power. It's real. He's got four hits tonight. None of them are right of the center fielder. Or excuse me, none are left of the center fielder. Everything is to center right center. And again, if you have a young player that can first learn that and understand how to stay middle the other way, yeah. the power and the pull side will come. You can't rush that. Once you do, then you're going to get the kid in bad habits. I like his approach. He knows who he is. At this young of an age to be able to do that consistently during the workouts, Pretty darn impressive. 18 on the board for the Florida Gators. New pitcher on the mound for the Seminoles to try to pick up a couple of outs here. 
Get it to the ninth inning. Jack Anderson. Freshman out of Tampa Jesuit High School. Just the third appearance for Jack's young career. I'm impressed with Callow again. You know, as young as he is, it reminds me a lot in the big leagues right now of Juan Soto. Yeah. From the right side. At a young age. At a young age, yeah. understanding who he is, quiet, good discipline. And going the other way. Oof. That was an effortless oppo home run. Well, to Eddie's point, too, you see so many kids at this age trying to generate power. And you generate power by, you are talking earlier, about the hands disappearing back behind your body. Or so many other things moving. The kid knows his swing pretty well, and he is so comfortable within it. Will Dalton. Four pitch walk. Couple of hits today for Will. That'll take us to Austin Langworthy. Trying to join the party. Last inning hit a line drive right at the second baseman. 0 for 4 for Langworthy. So I was kind of hoping that we'd see him on the mound tonight. I don't think we're going to see him on the mound right now. But, again, J.C. Flowers, who can fly in center field. We've already seen him hit a ball out tonight. Shallow right. That'll be out number two. And Langworthy, an 0 for 5 evening. After not pitching the first two years, is now the closer for this Florida State team. It's interesting to look back at some of the guys that have closed here. Buster Posey. Would come from behind home plate and close. And a Heisman Trophy winner, close. And now you've got a center fielder who didn't pitch the first two years. That it looks to be Eddie. His future professional baseball is probably going to be in the mound. This way, coming into the season, he wasn't even projected to be. Not even on the mound. Not even on the mound. No. And we're talking even draft status. He's just up to stock yes. with what he's doing on the mound. And. Again, it's a, it's a great story uh, to listen how this all happened, how it came about. But at the end of the day, in spring, in, in his freshman year, tried getting on the mound, had no idea where the ball was going. His arm started bothering him. He said, this isn't for me. Went back to, to state as an outfielder. Sophomore year, think you want to try the mound? No, I'm good. They asked him again. What about it? Think you want to try the mound? He said, okay, I'll try it. I'm going to tell you this. Financially, that was a pretty important decision. It's a raw arm. Blake Reese pinch hits, drills this one to right field. The park won't hold this. A two-run shot for Blake Reese. Blake Reese had been scuffling, lost his position, came in hitting 222. Just hit his first home run of the year. Got started early, too. Put that foot down. He barreled that bad boy. Of everything tonight, the two swings that are going to stick out the most, the home run to right. Kalilau had in that one if you're Kevin O'Sullivan. Because that's another guy. If you can get him going, you got another bat from the left hand side, that can prove pretty important as this season goes on. Roberto Pena back up to the plate, 0 for 2. Looks like a football score, doesn't it? Missed an extra point.
41-14 on the gridiron this year. Florida beat the Seminoles there. This one's high in the air down the right side. Well, both these teams certainly have big weekends in front of them. Florida State heading to NC State. Undefeated Wolfpack. Those crooked numbers. I know, that's crazy. Five, eight, seven. Isn't that Jenny's number? Eight, six, seven, <laughs> five, three, nine. That's no, close. Right? No, almost. There's <laughs> 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 no save it. Uh, yeah, up top. Eight, six, seven, five. Yeah, we can get there. Give me a telestrator. We nailed it right there. <laughs> First thing I got right. Called strike three. Inning is over. 20 to 7. He led this game 6 to nothing. Six hits of the game for the Seminoles. I think the big number that stands out, though, is the three in the top right. The yeah. three errors that Florida State had. And yeah, there could have been at least yeah. one more. You're right. Nick Wasucci, the new pitcher for the Gators. He'll face Drew Mendoza. Or Wasucci, just his second appearance of the year. Mendoza won for two today. His average sits at 340. This is the 248th meeting between these two schools. And of those 248, Mike Martin's been involved in 151 of them. How about that? Hmm. He's 76 and 74. About to go 76 and 75. So he needs one win. One win out of the next two. Finished with a winning record against the Gators. And I don't think this will be one that he'll remember. Or at least want to. Get a good golf bag out of it. He did. Got a trip to Canada. Got a hockey puck. <laughs> Hopefully that, that one will be going <laughs> upstream. Uh. How many hockey games do you think Mike Martin's been to? <laughs> <laughs> that was a question you didn't think you'd ask at the beginning of the night. <laughs> One thing a lot of people did not know was that Mike Martin was a basketball coach before he started coaching at Florida State. The other day, I ran into Woody Woodward. Big time Seminole out in Arizona. The one responsible for actually bringing Mike Martin over as an assistant coach to Florida State. That worked out okay, too. I mean, Coach Martin, before he became the head coach spent time as an assistant with Woody Ward, Woodward and Dick Hauser. Yeah. Yeah. One year with Dick Hauser as his assistant before George Steinbrenner called Dick Hauser and said, I think I want you to manage the Yankees. Dick Hauser looked at 11 and said, It's yours. You take over. Now, Steinberg used to bring the Yankees through Tallahassee the end of spring training or the beginning of spring training, I can't remember, but they'd come through and play an exhibition game against Florida State. I don't know if you were, I don't know if they were still doing that when you were there, Eduardo, but I, I was a student there and it was unbelievable. I mean, it was to see the Yankees, the pinstripes rolling out. Every year he'd bring them in? Yeah, it was like, well, I was there early in the mid 80s, yeah. All eight, you were there, they rolled through. <laughs> 
think because I thought we were, went at the same time over there. <laughs> yeah. They never rolled by when I was there. How many years were you there? I got there in the time of the early 80s. And left in the left early, in 90s. early 90s. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoyed it. I bet you did. <laughs> Called strike three, and down goes Tim Becker. Becker, by the way, just made the team this year. Played three years of club baseball. Decided to try out for the team and made the roster this year. Yeah, I love that. I mean, th that is a true walk-on. Club baseball. I didn't three know. I didn't know we had club baseball. Intramural club baseball, <laughs> or I guess not intramural club baseball. Yeah. And yeah, now he's on the club graduate student now. J.C. Flowers pops that one up. That should get to the seats. He must have loved the southern hospitality up there. Stayed around for a while. I did. I enjoyed it. It was a good time. I, you know, I even one time, I even hosted the Mike Martin coaches show one year, one time. I wanted it to be a year, but it was only one time. <laughs> Phone didn't <laughs> ring after that. <laughs> hey, I'm good again yeah. next week. Yeah, if you need me, I can be here. Yeah, we're all right. <laughs> Oh, and two, the count to Flowers. Masucci trying to end this one. That one stays up. Flowers does have a grand slam today. That is a bright spot for the Seminoles. Both you guys this question. These are two really young teams. Both these coaches have told us that they have played more freshmen than they can ever remember playing, starting. Who do you think has an advantage in terms of the youth right now? Like who who, who would who would you say has a little bit head start as this season rolls on in terms of the young talent? Florida State. For me, um, I mean, there's impact guys on both sides. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess you could make an argument it's a push. I, I think that I think Fabian's a big-time player. I think Kalilow's a big-time big player. <laughs> I think both have proven as much tonight. So is Cabell. So is DeSantis. I mean, I, I yeah. you flip a coin, and I think, I tell you this, you take either one. I mean, if you got to be young... You want to be young looking the way that each of them do right now because they're only going to get better as the season goes on. Seminoles down to their final outs. Nico Baldor pops him up left side. Looks like foul territory, and that will do it. So the Seminoles led six to nothing, couldn't hold on to the lead, and the Gators just opened up a can on them as this night went on. And it's the most runs that Florida has scored against Florida State since 1980. Yeah, and it's going to be a long trip back to Big Shooterville as. Florida State, last trip for Mike Martin, coming to Gainesville. It's a tough one. I think you're going to see both these clubs right there at the end of the year, though. I mean, they're only going to get better. The talent level is right there. And uh, for Mike Martin, the last time that he will visit this stadium, I'm not sure if he minds that right now.